This course was created for fine tutorials by Shai Tavor. Hi guys, my name is Shai Tavor and I'll be your instructor in this course about learning SQL by writing queries. I'm most welcome you in joining this course and wishing you the best success and hope you will enjoy the course. In this video I want to show you a short uh, overview about what we are going to learn in this course. So first of all, in the first section, I'm going to give you a brief overview about the database concepts and uh, show you what a database is and what are the needs of database. Then we go on to learn how to download and install a real database engine. I'm using in this course a PostgreSQL database because it's very simple to use and administrate. And I, in the next section, I'll show you how to download it, install it and create a database inside it. Then I'm going to show you how I created the real database. In this course, I've created the real database and populated it with real data for you to practice. All the queries in my course are practiced on this database and you can take them and try them by yourself. I think this is the best way to learn any technique idea. So I downloaded the database and created it for you and you can download it and install it by yourself. But take a note, if you don't need to, to run the queries by yourself or you don't want to do it, for example, if you're taking an academic course and just learning the theory of databases and don't need any practice use of it, you can skip those uh, lectures and go on to the select queries and the queries by themselves. Next, we start to dive into the SQL by itself. We start by learning about the select query, which is the fundamental query in SQL, which uh, perform in order to retrieve data. Then we'll add the where clause to this query that allow us to filter out any row that uh, doesn't uh, satisfy the condition. And then we learn how to combine few tables together to retrieve data from several tables, an operation we call join. The join allows us to take data that's found in all kinds of tables and combine them together in a single query. Then we see aggregate function, aggregate function that allow us to sum, to maximize, to minimize, to make average of data. And then we start to see all kinds of nested queries. We see how to nest a query inside the query, how to nest a query inside the where clause, and so on. We see more and more complex operation inside the nested queries to gain more and more complex data and more complex insights about this data. So this course elaborates all the data needed to create very complex uh, SQL queries to retrieve all kinds of data. This course is suitable for students in academic courses in universities or colleges that want to perform the SQL section in their academic course and this course is also useful for industrial and high-tech engineers that are trying to write queries in order to retrieve data from their local database or a global database. So. I hope you will like this course and I hope you, uh, you will succeed in it. I am wishing you the best success and of course, I hope you will enjoy it. So, let's dive in into the SQL. See you in the next lectures and in the course itself. Hi guys, before we dive into the, this course, I want to make a short guide map to show you where to start with this course because I know there are various of students who are taking this course for from various of, uh, of reasons, so I want to uh, aid you with some guides to how to uh, start with this course. In order to help you to understand this course's technical material, I've created a real database with real data that you can run your queries on. In a matter of fact, all the queries I'll show in this course were tested and ran on this database, and you can even rerun them by yourself to try things out. I think this is a very good practice to try the technical things on a real engine to see if you are right. On the other hand, you don't have to actually run the queries on the database. You can just solve them on a paper and some students just prefer this method. Section 1 of this course contains the preliminaries of the course. It would give you a good background of what is a database and the basic concepts that are must have knowledge to understand SQL queries. It is highly recommended that you, you would watch this section's lesson in order to success in this course. 
Section 2 and 3 contain the technical tutorials for installing and running the database engine. Section 2 guides you how to download and install Postgres SQL Server, which is the engine we'll be using in this course, and how to create a new database in it. Section 3 guides you how to load and populate the test data for this course. Students who don't interested in actually running the queries can, with no loss of knowledge, skip those sections. And I'm just noting it for you because I know that there are some students that just want to uh, access the uh, university exam and just writing queries on a paper and want to know the theory behind this. And it's all right. You don't have to actually run the queries on database. And if you don't want to do it, you can avoid section two and three when I, where I'm explaining how to create the real database. Sections 4 and over, the rest of this course, deal with the all aspects of SQL queries. The sections are by topics, so if you already feel comfortable with some aspects, feel free to skip. You don't have to watch every lesson continually. But please note that the sections do continue each other in a te technical knowledge, meaning that in each section, I assume you already know the material of the previous sections. It doesn't really matter if you already know the, the knowledge because you have watched the previous sections or because you've learned it uh, in other ways. In any way, every section just builds up on the previous uh, knowledge and you must know this knowledge. So I hope this guide map help you to, uh, to decide where to start in this course. And with these words, let's start with this course and I'm wishing you best success in this course and even joy. See you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to answer a most important question, a question that must be answered before we even start this course. What is a database? Before we answer this, let's imagine a quite realistic situation. In our adult life, we get a lot of paperwork from all kinds of services we get. Electricity and cellular bills, our tax forms, insurance reports, and so on. We all know that we should save those mails. Imagine you are in this situation and you know you have to save it all. The first idea that comes into your mind is to create a folder and put inside it every bill, receipt, or report you get as they come. This solution works great. You keep on sending your paperwork into this folder that grows bigger and bigger with time and you're happy because you know all your data is being saved. But imagine that one day you get a request for your cellular company saying you haven't paid your January bill. Well, you want to prove them you did. You have the proof. You just have to find it in your lovely folder. You open the folder, but this time not to insert another item inside, but to retrieve something, and you find piles over piles of paper of all kinds, type, colors, and sizes, and your needed item, the paid bill, well, good luck with it. The data is saved, that's correct, but it's unorganized, unstructured, and practically useless. You actually cannot find anything in this mess. So how will we solve it? Data is one of the most valuable assets of any organization, and it is clear that unreliable, missing or contradicting data may cause enormous catastrophic effects on the organization. The data must be saved. But as we saw earlier in our small story, how will we save the data? In text files? Maybe in other file types? And besides, how will we eff efficiently retrieve and update the data? And how can we make sure the data is consistent and reliable? Those are important questions and the answer for them is the database. Database, or DB, is a general name for a mean of storing data in the computer. The data itself is saved on external data stores like hard disks, magnetic tapes, backup drives and more. Usually, the storing hardware is not accessible or even not interesting for the data consumer and the user. So, the data is stored in an organized and structured way on some kind of hardware, and the user wants to use this data. But how the user can do this? We need some kind of interface, a mediator, to connect between the user and the data. Database Management System, or DBMS, is a software that mediates between the user and the database. The DBMS includes an interface that allows the user to ask questions about the data, to update it or insert new information. 
the DBMS manages the user request such that the, the ex execution won't interfere or destroy the inner structure and organization of the data. So we have the solution to our original question. It is most important and even critical to save data, but data must be stored in a way that would allow it to be retrieved efficiently, otherwise it would be useless. A database is a mean of storing data in an organized way. The DBMS is an interface that interacts with the data and mediates it to the user. Let's go on to the next lecture to see the main and most popular type of database. In this video, we're going to talk about relational database. As we saw earlier, database is a mean of storing data in the computer. A relational database is a database that its data storing model, based on a relational model, originated in the 1970s. According to this model, the data is organized in relations or tables. The database itself is a collection of all these tables. Let's look for a relation for example. This is a relation of students. It saves data on students. You can see that there are four columns. Each column then represents an attribute of the student. In this example, we have four attributes, the ID, the first name, the last name, and the average. The table consists of a lot of rows. Each row is a record that represents a single student, which have four values, the ID, the first name, the last name, and the average. Every column has its own type, which determines the scope of values that can be inserted. The relation schema is a terminology that identifies the table's name and its column's name and order. For example, this is the schema of the student's table. It has the name and four values for the columns, which denotes the name and the order of the columns. A table contains a lot of rows. We want to be able to distinguish the rows from each other. In every table, we define a primary key. Primary key is one or more attributes that must be unique for each row. Two different rows must therefore be different at least in their primary key's values. For example, let's look at the student table. What is the primary key? Which attribute must be unique? It's easy to understand that there are no two students with the same ID. The other attributes, the first name, last name, and the average, can be duplicated. We can imagine two students with the same first name, or same last name, or even same average. But the ID must be unique. In the schema, we denote the primary key with an underline. For example, in the student schema, we see the ID column is underlined. Here's a little exercise for you. Suppose you want to store data about courses. Every course has its unique course number, a name, and number of academic credit points the course gives. Write a schema for the courses table and mark the primary key. The solution in a few seconds. So here is the solution. This is a schema for the courses table. It has a CNAM property or attribute or column, which is the primary key, it has the C name column and the credit. And the table would look something like that. We have a lot of row, which e with each row has three values of the C num, the C name, and the credit points. Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to talk about foreign keys. Let's go back to our two tables. The first one is the students tables that save data about students with all the details. And the second one is the courses table that saves data about courses. Now, suppose you want to store data about which student took which course. For example, we know that John Smith took the course OOP. And we know that John Smith also took the course database, DB. And we know that Sarah Berker took the course OOP. Where can we store this data? The first attempt is to try storing the data in the student's table. For example, we enlarge the student table and uh, edit the, the, the properties, the colors of the course. And for example, we can see that in the line of John Smith, we uh, have the, the properties of the course John Smith took. And in the line of Sarah Bucker, we have the additional properties of the course Sarah Bucker took. But this is not a very good idea. Every student can appear only once in the table, so we won't be able to store several courses for each student. 
In this example, we already show, saw that in the previous slide, John Smith took the database course. But in this table, we cannot indicate this uh, fact because John Smith appeared only once in the table. Another attempt is try storing the data in the courses table. For example, this is the courses table and we enlarge it by adding the properties, the columns of the students. And we can see that the course OOP it was taken by John Smith with all its details. But this is obviously won't work. Each course can appear only once in the table, but each course has many students enrolled. In this example, we know that Sarah Barker also enrolled to the OOP course, but we cannot indicate this fact because the, the line of OOP appears only one in the table. So what, what is the solution? Let's define a third table. We will call it studied and it will store the data about which student studied which course. This is the table studied. You can see that the table consists of the elements of the students table and the elements of the courses table. Let's look in detail in this table. This table can capture all the data. You can know that there are no two rows that are entirely identical. One student can definitely take many courses. We can see that John Smith appears, appears twice in this table, but since it, take, it take, took uh, every time a different course, the line of John Smith is not entirely identical, so we can repeat it. One course can be studied by many students. You can see that the course OOP is taken by two students and the details of OOP appears twice, but uh, in every time with a different student. So th this table definitely can capture all the data we want about which student uh, studied which course. Now let's talk about data duplications. Data duplications is a, a situation where we save a one piece of data, one item of data in more than one place. Data duplication is prone to problems for several reasons. First of all, we store the same data items many times, so we use a lot of redundant storage space. When we dealing with a lot of data, this could be very problematic to, this, to the space of the database. But another problem is that we might create contradictions in the data, which means that we have the two contradicting facts about the same data and we wouldn't be able to decide which of them is the true. For example, let's go back to our example and suppose the John Smith average had changed to 92, as it indicated in yellow in the students table. But now you can notice that we have to remember to change the average in every place it appears. In this example, we saw that the average uh, property of John Smith is also duplicated in the study table. And in this table, the, the average stayed as it was previous the, the change. So now, if we ask ourselves, what is John's average? The answer, the very disastrous answer is that we don't know. The data is contradicting because one table, the student's table, says the John Smith average is 92 and the other table, the study table, says that the same John Smith has the average of 90.5 and we don't know which of them is the fact of the, the data. This situation is very dangerous to any database system. We have to be uh, able to trust the data. The data must be reliable. And the uh, opportunity of the data to contradict itself is very dangerous to the uh, business we're running. So the solution is like that. We don't need in the study table to save again all the additional uh, features of the student. We don't need to save the first name, last name, and the average, average because those fields are already known in the student's table. And again, we don't have to save the course details, the course name and the credit points because those details are saved in the courses table. So our studied table shrinks and becomes very small. It saves only two columns, the ID, which is the student ID, and the course number, which this student took. Those uh, columns point to the primary keys in the student and courses tables. So we only have to store the primary keys of students and courses. Through those keys, we can obtain all necessary information with, without duplicating. For example, we see in the first line in the studied uh, table that the student, which is number 111, took the course which is number is 1234. 
If you want to know what is the name of this student, we just have to follow the, the student's table, and there we have to find the 111 student, the student with the ID 111, and there we can find all the additional data needed to know about this student. And if you want to know what is this course 1, 2, 3, 4, we have to follow to the courses table, and there we can find the CNAM property, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we can see that this course is OOP, which gives th 6 uh, credit points. The columns ID and CNAM in the table studied are called foreign keys. A foreign key is one or more columns in one table that is defined as a primary key in another table. You can see that the ID in the studied table is defined as primary key in the student's table, and the CNAM in the studied table is defined as the primary key in the course's table. And what is the studied primary key? The student ID can repeat many times. As we can see here, the 111 ID repeats twice because it represents the same students that took two courses. And the CNAM, the course number, can also repeat because we can see that here the, the course 1234 was taken or was uh, enrolled by two students. So every one of these uh, uh, properties or these columns can be by itself a primary key but the combination of them both cannot repeat. So the primary key is the combination ID and CNAM because the combination of 111, which represents a specific student, and 1234, which represents a specific course, cannot repeat itself twice because it isn't logical and it isn't reasonable. So this is the primary key of the studied table. So, in this lecture, we saw a very powerful concept called the foreign key that allows us to capture additional information that's found in the connection between two or more tables in a way that we don't have to duplicate all the information that is already found in the uh, original tables. We just have to duplicate the primary keys. And through the primary keys, we all, uh, always can go back to the original tables and achieve and obtain the, the rest of the information needed. Hi guys, in this lecture I want to show you how to download and install the PostgreSQL database server. So as we saw, seen in the beginning of the course, we need a DBMS, a database management system, to store our tables and data and run queries. There are a lot of DBMS for all kinds of purposes around the web, some of the systems are free, some are not. Some are aimed for a large and huge amount of data and some just are used to, uh, as an experiment, experimentary and uh, academic uses. But we need to choose one of them that will be able to run our queries. In this course, I've chosen to use a RDBMS, a relational DBMS, called PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL is a free and open source RDBMS. It is used both for academic and commercial applications. And in addition, it is relatively easy to install and administrate. And I thought that since this course is not about running and administrate a, a database management system, and I just want to use the database management system to, uh, to demonstrate my queries, I wanted it to be as simple as possible. So PostgreSQL is a very sane and good alternative. So let's go on to the PostgreSQL official website and see how to download it. So this is the official PostgreSQL uh, website. You, you can see the, the elephant icon. This is the icon of the, the DBMS. And there is uh, some kind of information here, maybe interesting you, maybe not. But we are going to uh, press the download button. After pressing the download button, we have some kind of uh, uh, options to downloading. And of course, you can download uh, according to your system. And I'm choosing macOS. And then you have uh, uh, all kinds of uh, downloading options. PostgreSQL comes with an installer that can install the server itself and the shell, the command line, in which you can administrate and run all the queries you want. It also comes with a graphical user interface application, but again, since I don't want to concentrate my course in running the PostgreSQL database, I'm using the command line option, and in a Mac it's coming here in the PostgreS app, but in the Windows it comes with another version, but you always can download it and install it. After doing it, you'll, you'll see the small icon of the elephant, which is the, the PostgreSQL icon. 
Now when I'm uh, running it, you can see that the post PostgreSQL is, uh, is not running. Let's open it, Postgres. This is the control panel of the PostgreSQL, and you see that the indication is not running. I can start it, and now the server is running and ready to, to serve us. When you run the server, you'll get all the databases that are available in this server. Here you can see that I have several databases because I'm using it uh, to run this course. But when you run it on the first time, you see only one database, which is called the Postgres database. This is the default database in which you, you start your application with Postgres. So this is how you download and install the PostgreSQL server. And in the next lecture, we see how we can create a new database in it. Hi, everyone. So, after we downloaded and installed the Postgres server, we want to create a new database, a database that would store all of our tables and data. So let's see how it's done. So first of all, we we'll open the PostgreSQL control panel, as we've seen in the previous lecture. If the server is not running, start it. And again, you can see all the databases that are available for you in this server. Now let's choose the Postgres database. This is the default database that comes with the server. If we double click it, the terminal is open. Just enlarge it a little bit. So this is the terminal. Okay, now in the terminal, we are using the, the command which is called create database. And here we're giving the database a name. For example, let's call it mydb. Don't forget the semicolon. After we press enter, the indication says create database, which is the database is created. If you go back to the, uh, to the control panel, we can see that here in the control panel, there is a new database called MyDB. If you want to erase the database, we can, again, in this uh, terminal uh, uh, type, drop database and the name of the database. And when we get the indication of drop database, if we take a look again in the panel, we can see that the database MyDB is no longer available here. Just take a note that dropping a database drop all the data, uh, including in the database, it's really a dangerous action. So this is how you create a database. And to start running these queries on this course, you have to create a database called YouTube Trending. This is the database that I'll use in this course. And in the next section, I'll show you what this database contains and how to populate it with data of our own so we'll be able to query it and run our queries. So see you in the next section. Hi everyone. In this lecture, I want to make an overview of the data model that we will be using in this course. The data that we will be using will, is taken from the YouTube actual database. YouTube collects data about the video's uploads. We will use a small part of the available data as a database for our course and we use it as examples to check our queries that we will learn in this course. This data is freely available through the YouTube public API. You can download the table schemas and examples from these lectures resources and in the next few lectures I'll show you how to set them up and load the data into your own database. So let's go on and see what are the data entities. YouTube distinguishes uploads from different countries and saves a country code for each video. Each country code is two capital letters. For example, CA is Canada and US is the United States. We will create a countries table that would save for each country code the actual country name. So this is the schema of the countries table. It has two columns, the CID, which is also the primary key, and it, it is the country code, and the country itself, which is a string that contains the country name. For example, this is the table we will be using. In this course, we'll use only those five countries, Canada, United States, Great Britain, Germany, and France, to make things simple. The video uploaders assign a category to each video. The categories are from a predefined YouTube categories. Every category has a unique number and a title. For example, one is the category film and animation, two is the category autos and vehicles, and ten is the category music. 
we will create a categories table that would save for each category number its title. So the table contains two columns, the cat ID, which is the category ID unique number, and the title, which is a string that describes the category. So this is a part of the categories table. There are 32 YouTube's categories. This table here shows only six of them. You can see the full list in the lecture's resources. The main table in our database is the videos. This table would hold information about each video that was uploaded to YouTube. For each video, we'll save the following data. First of all, we save a string that represents the video ID. The second thing is a string that represents the country's ID from which this video came from. The title is the video's title as given by the video's uploader. Cat ID is the category to which this video belongs. Publish time is of course the time this video was published, which in the format of date and time. View num is how many views this video gained. Likes num is how many likes this video gained. And dislikes num is how many dislikes this video gains. Those fields are only integers. So the video table looks like that. And we can see a very small part of this table. You can see the video ID, which is a some kind of random string combines letters and, and the integers and the is country ID, title, category ID, etc. all those numbers. The video's ID is unique, but it's unique per country. So that this is possible that two video ID or the same video ID would appear in two different videos as long as they're coming from different countries. And so the primary key is the combination of the video ID and the country ID. So this is the video primary key. The CID is a foreign key to the country's table. So with the CID, we can achieve the, the country name. And the cat ID is a foreign key to the categories table. So through the cat ID, we can achieve the category name. For each video, there is a list of tags that helps finding this video's context. A single video can contain more than one tag and a tag word can describe more than one video. For each tag word, we'll save the following data. A phrase, which is the text of the tag. It doesn't have to be a single word, it's just a string that the video's uploader gave as this video's tag. VAD and CAD are the key of the video this tag belongs to. Since a video is identified by its ID and the country ID, we need both of them. So this is how the tags table schema looks like. It has three columns, the phrase, which is the text itself, the VAD and CAD, which are the, uh, the ID of the video. So this is a small part of the tags uh, uh, table. We have the phrase Brighton, for example, that uh, belongs to the VAD uh, N5, etc., and it comes from Great Britain, and uh, the phrase in the life, which uh, belongs to the same video. So we can see that the VAD and the CAD are the same. Since the VID and CID can repeat themselves and the phrase can repeat themselves, all the three columns are the primary key of this table. And here is a small diagram that describes the whole database. We have the main table, which is the video table, with the foreign keys CID and CAT ID that uh, points and references to their uh, corresponding tables, and the tags table that uh, points to this, uh, the video table. So we'll use this uh, table a lot in this, uh, this table a lot in this course. And uh, as I said before, in this course uh, resources, you can find the scripts that load the data into the database. And in the next two lectures, I'll show you how to actually load the tables themselves and the data into the tables. So see you in the next lectures. Hi guys. So, after in the previous video we've seen the data model, it's time to create the real tables for the models we've talked about and fill them with data. So in this lecture I'll show you how to actually create the tables. So in the resources, as you find in the previous uh, lecture, you'll find the script contains the code that created the tables of YouTube trending database and in this lecture I'm going to show you how to run it and actually create the tables. This script creates all the tables and their connections, and it fills the countries and categories tables. So first of all, let's look how we can create a single table in this uh, language. So we use the create table command. 
This table, uh, this uh, uh, command is pretty straightforward. We use the syntax create table and then follows the table's name. The table's name here is countries because I'm creating the countries table. And please take a note that this language is not case sensitive. So even though here I'm calling the table countries with capital C, in a matter of fact, later on, I will be able to access this table using small letter C or any other combinations of the letters uh, that consist the word countries. Okay, so I'm using the, the capital letter just because it's convenient for me, but it doesn't mean that this name must be or must start with a capital letter. The next thing is to elaborate the columns of the table. So I'm uh, indicating each column by the column name, in the, this uh, column, the column name is C underscore ID, which is the unique identifier of each country. I, I remind you that YouTube saves two capital letters for each uh, country. And the next thing after the column name is the column type. It's the data type in, in here. The data, the data type is text, which is string. And the third thing is the primary key. Primary keywords indicate that this column uh, would serve as a primary key of this uh, table. So the database engine would um, uh, ensure that there, are, there will be no two uh, different rows with the same CID value inside them, and this is done via the primary keyword. After that, we're writing comma because each column must be separated by comma, and then we go on to write the other column. So here we have just another one called country, which is also text. I want to show you another more complicated table, the videos table. So again, create table and the table's name is videos. And uh, again, I'm writing all the columns. You can see that there is a mixture of, col of, of columns, the VID, CID, there are all kinds of uh, types to the columns. For example, uh, in addition to text, we have integer, like the category ID or the views num, which are just numbers. And we have a timestamp for the publish time because the timestamp is the date time format this database uses to save times in, in its data. Uh, and another thing, another interesting thing is that the CID, for example, the, the country ID uh, is uh, just uh, the two letters, for example, the CA for Canada or uh, US for United States. And you, we know that it, it's a foreign key that references to another table, in this case, to the country's table. So to indicate the fact that the value it's found in CID is actually referenced to another table, we use the word references and uh, write the, the table name to which this uh, ID, ID or this uh, column references. So CID text is the type of the CID column. References countries says that this, this CID's data is a, a primary key elsewhere in this uh, occasion in the countries table. Please take a note that in the countries table here, I'm not writing to which column I want to reference because it's obvious, it's default that the reference goes to the primary key of countries. Another one like that in the cat ID, which references to the categories. So the database engine knows that the, the, the data that is found in the cat ID field, in the cat ID column, is just a reference to the primary key in the categories table. The last thing I want to show here is the primary key. The videos table has two primary keys. If you remember, to identify uniquely one video, we need also the video ID, which is a unique number, and the country ID, because the video ID in YouTube can repeat itself in various countries, but the combinations of video ID and country ID cannot repeat themselves. So I cannot write the primary key twice in the columns that uh, the primary key will be the VID and the CID. To do so, I have to separate the declaration of the primary key and put it in the end of the declarations of the columns and using the primary key keyword and in brackets, just naming the columns that together combines the primary key. So now let's go on to the script and see how all those created uh, commands are look like. So this is the code that I've written. You can download it from the lecture resources and we can see that the create table countries is here and the videos. And you have another two uh, tables, the categories, which looks pretty much the same, and the tags table. In addition, you may find in this file uh, some insert commands to insert data to the tables, but we'll look at it in the next uh, lecture. So now we want 
to, to uh, create the tables themselves in the database, so we want to run the create tables commands. So we can go to the SQL shell and just run the create table uh, commands one by one, but it's uh, pretty awkward, and uh, in addition, if you want to repeat this process uh, several times, you just have to type it again, and it's not very efficient. The other way is to take all the, ta the, all the script that I've written and run it once on the shell. So this is the command uh, that I can do it in a minute I'll show you how to do it. We just type in this uh, line, the, uh, the backslash i, and then I'm typing the, the path, the file path, for the create table uh, uh, file. Okay, the create table.sql is the, is the file that contains the script uh, in which all the create tables uh, uh, commands are found. So in a minute I'll show you how to do it. And uh, in addition, if you later on you want to show all the tables that are exist in, existing in the database, we can use the, the command backslash dt which is a detailed table or something like that, and, and uh, this would elaborate and would give us a list of all the tables that can be found in the database. So let's look how it's done. So first of all, we have to go to the Postgres shell, and here just make sure that the shell is, the, the server is started. If not, just press the Start button. And here we have a prompt of all the database we have. I'm going to choose the YouTube training database, double-click it, and then we get the shell open up. Let me enlarge it a little bit. And then I'm going to run the, 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 the create table script like that. So this is the, the command backslash i and then the file path for the create db.sql file. After I run it, I get a report that four table was created and a lot of insert data, I'll show it in the next uh, lesson. So if you press here backslash dt, you can see the report, all the table names. We have some kind of uh, other uh, information that we just don't need right now, but we have the name of the tables, categories, countries, tags, and videos, and you can see by the, by the way that the tables names are all appear in small letters, even though I've created them in capital letters. Okay, so now we have the tables uh, uh, run and we can go on to fill them up with data and that will be the, the subject of our next lecture. So see you then in a few minutes in our next lecture. Hi, in this lecture we'll continue what we did in the previous one and show how to insert data into the tables we created in the previous lecture. So we can use the insert statement in order to insert rows into the tables. We will populate the videos and the tags tables with some data so we'll be able to ask interesting questions about it. So the insert command looks like that. We start with the insert into keywords and then we enter the table name to which we want to enter values. Then we write the keyword values and then in, in brackets we write the values of a new row we want to insert. Please take a note that the values must contain all the columns in the row and in the original order they are appear in the table. So let's look about the file on the files and see how it looks. So this is the file we've, saw in the, we've seen in the uh, previous lecture. Uh, this, this file, this script contains the create tables commands, but in the end of it, we have two insert commands. The first one is insert into countries. We insert into the country tables all the countries we'll be using in this course, and since there's, there's a, a few countries, I did it in the same uh, file. So you can see I'm inserting multiple rows and I'm doing it by putting a comma between a, every new row, and we see insert the Canada and US and etc. And then I'm using the insert into categories, and I'm insert all the uh, categories YouTube gave me, and for example, one is the fill in animation, as you can see that uh, 27 is education, and there are 32 of them, and every row is separated by comma, and this is populate all the tables and the, con the countries and categories tables with their values. The next two files we have is the videos the table and the tags tables. This is the video table or the insert into value. It consists a lot of rows that I'm inserting into the uh, videos table. And if we look about uh, one, uh, one row, for example, this one, we can see that the values of the row is the unique key of the video, the unique key of the country, and both of them together 
contained or consists the, the primary key of the video. Then we have the title, for example, Eminem, Walk in the Water, etc. This is the, the, the category ID. Uh, in this uh, example, it's 10. Don't remember, don't remember what it means. Uh, the next thing, thing is the published date. You can see that it is the date and time. This is the 11th and 10th, and this is the time itself. The next uh, th uh, three columns are the total views of the this video, total likes, and total dislikes. Okay, and this is all consists one row in the video table, and we have a lot of them. You can see that uh, there are a lot of rows, uh, 142 rows together. Okay, and you can see that there are four, uh, various of uh, countries, US, United States, and uh, Great Britain, and France, etc. Uh, this gives all the, va uh, the values for the videos together. The next uh, interesting uh, file is the create tags file, which looks quite the same, insert into tags values, and again, I'm inserting a lot of tag, and for example, you can see that I'm inserting here the tags Eminem, and this is those two values are the uh, video ID and the uh, country ID, together consists of the primary key of the video, and Eminem walk on water, all those tags are for the Eminem video we saw, and a lot of other keywords. You can see that the keywords can be uh, not only single word like here, but they can be a, a, a full uh, a phrase or something like that, um, even uh, in Chinese or other language. So we can uh, uh, see all the tags. There are a lot of tags here. I insert a lot of tags. And uh, by the way, if you want to know how I extracted this data from YouTube API and put it into a relational database, you can see in the appendix in this course, I show the, the Python script I've written to extract the, the text files into a, dat a database. Now let's go and put it into our real database. So again, let's open the Postgres shell and uh, make sure that the server is running and choose the YouTube training database. Let's enlarge it a little bit. And then we run the script as we saw in the previous later, uh, lecture. Okay, so this line is for the create videos uh, SQL. Okay, you can see that all the inserting uh, uh, was made successfully. We see uh, I, I made it a single insert for every country, so 25 for Canada and 26 for uh, Great Britain, etc. And uh, then we insert the tags SQL. This is the file name. Okay, and again, it tells me how much tags it enters. Obviously, it's a lot more tags than uh, countries uh, or than videos because for each video there are several uh, tags, tag words. So now we have all the data in our tables, and again, you can run the script just like that in your uh, local computer, and you have the database uh, full loaded and populated with data, and we are just ready to start asking questions and deliver queries to this data, to this database, and find interesting facts. So now we can really start the SQL course and the SQL uh, syntax to uh, ask queries about the database. See you in the next section and in the next next lectures. Hi guys, and welcome to the new section about the SQL. And in this lecture, we show a short introduction to SQL. We saw how to create tables and fill them with data. Actually, we actually did it, and we have a lot of data in our tables. Now that the data is organized in tables, we want to be able to ask questions about the data and retrieve information. Those questions that deliver to the database are called queries. For example, let's took the tables we've seen in the beginning of the course, the tables of students and courses, and the table studied that uh, saves information about students and courses, which means which student took which course. This is the table schemas with all the primary keys, and now we can ask ourselves what kind of queries we, want to, uh, we, we would like to deliver to the database, what kind of uh, questions, what kind of data we want to uh, extract from the database. So we have a lot of questions. For example, what are the names of all the students in the database? What is the course that gives the highest credit points? Which courses the student John Smith had taken? What is the average grade in the OOP course? And a lot many other questions we can ask about the data. So the language we use to ask the, qu the queries is called SQL or SQL. 
SQL is a structured query language, a language that enables us to deliver queries to the database. SQL is a standard that's supported by all DB vendors. In a matter of fact, the insert statement we use to insert data is part of the SQL syntax. But in this course, we'll concentrate in retrieving ex existing data from the tables rather than changing and manipulate it. We just see in this course a lot of ways how we can retrieve information extracted for the database and gain interesting insights about the data. So let's start with the next lecture that start to construct the initial SQL statement. Hello everyone, in this lecture I want to start and work on the select query which is the main query structure in the database. So the syntax, the syntactic structure of the select is like that. We have the select keyword and after that the columns and the columns are what we want to retrieve, the columns names we want to get from the tables. The next thing is the from keyword and then we elaborate the tables name. The tables names are the tables in which the data is found. And then follows the WHERE clause, and there we elaborate the constraints on the data, the things we want the data to fulfill in order to be retrieved. In terms of uh, order of performance, uh, when we look at this SELECT statement, first of all, the first thing that is performed is the FORM keyword. So the database engine, first of all, goes to the tables that we uh, elaborated in the FORM statement and just fetch them and give them uh, or load them into memory. Then the database engine go over the uh, where conditions and uh, apply them on the table. So every row that doesn't fulfill the conditions that uh, uh, are described in the where clause uh, are, is filtered out. And what we get after the where, uh, after applying the where conditions is uh, the, the only the rows that fulfill the constraints. And then the database engine uh, goes over the select and picks only the columns that we described in the select clause. So this is the database, the experiment, experimentary database we're using. We have four tables, the countries, categories, videos, and tags from the YouTube Trends database. And now I want to start to write a query. And let's st start with the first query. The first query is to retrieve all the countries and their IDs. So first of all, the first thing you should do whenever you try to write a query is try to think and find where is the data can be found, where is the da data resi resides, because this is the, the, the place you have to go to fetch the data. So if you, we are looking at the, the, the database, we see that the countries table contains all the data we want. It contains the CID, the country ID, and the country name by itself. So this is the data we want, and the table we want to design our, our uh, uh, query is the countries table. So this is the query, select C underscore ID, comma country from countries, and don't forget the semicolon in the end. This query would, gi would give me, as a result, a table of two uh, columns and uh, all the rows in the database. So each row contains the country ID and the country name. For example, the first row is Canada, which its country ID is CA, and the country name is, of course, Canada. Take a note that in all these calls, I'm writing those queries and numbering them. So here it is. This query is number one in this video. And you can find all the queries that was presented in every lecture in additional resources of each lecture. So I'm numbering it, them so you can be able to find them easily. There is an alternative of writing this query. We can write select asterisk from countries. The asterisk sign indicates that we want to retrieve all columns in the table. So if you think about it, when I'm writing select C underscore ID and country, actually I'm just describing all the columns that are found in the countries table. So the SQL language uh, uh, offers me a, a short uh, way to, of doing it, and it, this is by writing the asterisk uh, sign. There is another way to write in this query. I'm using this way, select c.cid and c.country from countries c. The c here is an alias. We give the table a temporary name. So the countries table is alias as the c name. And then I'm referring the c.cid and c.country. 
In this example, it's not necessary, but it's a good practice because when we start to have a lot of tables in our uh, queries, it will be very confusing to know from which table we're getting each data. And when uh, we give the temporary names to the tables, it became much easier. So let's look on another query. I want to write a query that finds all the categories and the IDs. And again, let's try to think where the data is found. And we see that the, the category table uh, con uh, contains all the data because the, all the data about category contains the category ID, which is a number, 1, 2, 3, 10, 12, etc., and the title of the category. So we can write the query like that. Select c.cat underscore ID, c.title from category C. And again, we can avoid the alias here and we can use the asterisk whatever you want. Let's look at another example, find all the categories titles. In this example, we see again, the data is found in the categories table, but here I don't want to see the category ID. I just want to see the title itself. So the query looks like that, select c.cat ID from category C. Here I'm describing only one column that I want to retrieve from the table. And then I'll get in the result a table that contains only one column, the title column, and the rows uh, according to the rows in the tables. So I'm getting only a long list of the titles in the table without the category IDs. So this example uh, shows us how we can select only part of the columns in the table. We don't have to select all the columns that there are in the table. Another query, find all expressions that are used as tags. As you remember, the tags table contains all phrases, all strings, that the, the video uploader choose to tag them as tag words of his video. And for each phrase, it contains the, the video it, uh, it uh, tag. So the VID and the CID, the country ID, are the primary key of the video. So I want to see only the phrases by themselves, only the phrases that are used to as tag words. So I'm using select t.phrase from tags t. And what I get is again a table of one column that contains the title column and the rows, each row contains one phrase from the table. So here is a question for you. What if a phrase is found more than once in the table? For example, you can see here in the table that the word water is found as a phrase. But I can imagine that a lot of other videos may refer to water as a tag word. So I will have water a, lo a lot of time in the table. What would happen if it, it is the case? And the answer is that the phrase would appear many times in the result. In, in a matter of fact, uh, the, the phrase would appear in the result as many times as it appears in the table itself. We can use the keyword distinct to remove duplications from the results, like that. Select distinct t.phrase from tags t. In this way, all duplications are removed and every phrase appears only once in the result set even though, though it may uh, appear a lot of times in the table. But just take a note that the distinct operation is relatively an expensive operation, expensive in the terms of runtime complexity. So if you don't have a good reason to remove duplications, you should avoid using it. And here is a small exercise for you. Try to, to write a query that finds all video titles and the number of likes. What do you think? Do you think there can be duplication in the results? So I encourage you to stop here the video and try to write it by yourself and then go on and see the solution. So the solution in a few seconds. So here is the solution. The data is found in the videos table. The videos table contains a lot of data about a video, about each video, but I'm interested in two columns, the title and the likes now. So I'm writing the query like that, select v.title and v.likes underscore num from videos v. And now I was asked if, uh, if there could be a duplication. I mean, if there can be in the result set two rows that contains exactly the same title and the same likes number. And the answer is yes, since the title and the likes num are not primary key. And we can imagine there can be more than one video with the same title and the same number of likes. So the, the rows can be duplicated. 
So this is the main structure of the select query. Uh, I remind you that all the queries we've seen in this video as all the queries we will see in the next videos are uh, in the resources files of each lecture and I numbered, I numbered all the videos uh, one after another so you can easily find them in the resources. So see you in the next lecture. Uh, in the next lecture I will demonstrate how we can run, actually run the queries in the shell of Postgres. Hi, in this lecture I want to show you how to run the queries in the Postgres shell and how to look at the results that we get. So first of all, let's look at the Postgres dashboard and open the YouTube training database. And just enlarge it a little bit. This is the shell. Here we can type our queries. And let's start with a simple query. Select asterisk from countries. And you can see this is the result set. We get some kind of a table with two columns, the CAD and the country, and all the rows elaborated here. In addition, in the end, we have a summary of all the rows we get. So we, we get here five rows. Let's write another query. Select C title from category C. So here I'm using the, the alias and I want to find all the titles in the categories uh, table. And this is the title. You can see we have film animation, auto and vehicles, music, pets, etc. Here you can see the, the column here means that there are uh, more results. So if I press enter, I get another row and another row and I can press uh, the down arrow. And now I can see that there was 32 rows to this query. Let's look at a bigger query. For example, let's select t.phrase from tags t. Okay, so we can see that we have the column phrase and we start to have all those words or keywords. And then we have a lot of other rows. If I'm pressing here the down arrow, I will get a lot and lot of a number of words. And actually, I don't want to run over them all. I just want to, to stop this. So to do so, we press the Q button. The Q button just quit this query. So this is a nice way to uh, stop all the iteration of the, of the results if there are a lot of them. And just another uh, small query I want to show you. Uh, let's uh, write the query, select asterisk from videos. Okay, I'm, I'm selecting from the video table and here you can see that since videos table is, is a huge table, I mean a huge with a number of columns, uh, we get uh, this presentation overlapping itself. It's pretty inconvenient to see it. So we have the video ID, the category ID, the country ID, category ID, publish time, use name, title. It's uh, pretty uh, not convenient to look at it in this way, but this is the way the, the Postgres shows us the, the results. Uh, not very easy to see. So here I can, I can press enter or down arrow to see a lot of other results and quit to quit it. So this is the way you can run your queries and I highly recommend you to try and run some of the queries by yourself to see the results. Uh, this is the reason we have a real database with real data in, inside it so we can try it out. So see you in the next lecture. We'll go on to see the workloads. Hi. In this video, we'll widen the select query we've seen in the previous lecture and add it to it the where clause. So, as you remember, the structure of the select query was like that. We have the select keyword and then the column, so there are the values you want to retrieve. Then we have the from clause, which means the tables the data is found in. And then we have the where clause that elaborates the constraints on the data the conditions we want the data to fulfill in order to be retrieved in the select. In the order of the things, we saw that first of all, the database engine goes to the tables and, and fetch the tables that we want uh, to, to fetch. And then it goes over the rows and for each row in the table that fulfill the conditions, it goes to the select and select the uh, particular columns we wanted to see. So let's start with a simple query with a where clause. The query is find video titles that had more than 1000 views. To do so, we have to add the where clause 
and the data is found in the videos table, of course, the title and the views. And this is the query select v.title from videos v, where v.viewsNumbs greater than 1000. Now the database engine goes over each row in the, in the table, and for each row in which the views num value is greater than 1000, this row's title goes to the result set. Let's see another example. Find videos, titles, and publish time that were uploaded from Canada. So again, we select the V title and V publish time from videos V, and then where V dot CID equals to CA. Take a note that since CA is a string, we must enclose it with a single quotation mark. Find videos, titles, and publish time that were not uploaded from Canada. Here we want to use the negation property, and we do it like that. In the where clause, you see I'm using the v.cid not equals to ca. The exclamation mark combines with the equals indicates the negation. So every row that its value in the cid is not ca would appear in the result set. There is an alternation to writing the exclamation mark in this uh, way. We can use this uh, sign, which is only the smaller than and greater than signs together, and again, it means just uh, uh, not equals, and you can use either of them as you want. We can write more complex conditions by combining AND and OR operators. For example, find videos, titles, and publish time that were uploaded from Canada, and the total views is greater than 10,000. Here, we want that each video that comes to the result set must satisfy two conditions. It must be from Canada, and its total uh, views must be greater than 10,000. So, you can see that in the WHERE clause, I'm using the AND uh, keyword, where v.cad equals to ca and v.viewsNum greater than 10,000. So now, every row that fulfilled those two conditions, it must fulfill both of them, would appear in the result set. Take a look at this equation. Find videos, titles, and publish time that are from categories 1 or 2. So now, I'm using the OR operator and take a look at the WHERE clause where v.catID equals to 1 or v.catID equals to 2. So every row in the videos table that its value in the category ID is equal to 1 or 2 would appear in the result set. And there is a little question for you. What do you think would happen if I replace the OR operator in the WHERE in the AND operator? So the answer is that I would get an empty set, empty results, no results in the query, because the end operator demands that both the condition would be satisfied. So in order to satisfy this condition, I had to find rows that the category value is 1 and 2 in the same time. But it can't be. There cannot be a single row that has two different values in the category ID uh, column. So since no row uh, satisfies this condition, the result is null. There is no results, zero results. What does the next query return? This is the query. Take a look and read it carefully. And I recommend you to stop, to pause the, the video for a few seconds and try to estimate by yourself what would be the results of this query. So, I hope you've done it. So, you can see that in the uh, WHERE clause, we're demanding that the CID, the country ID, would be GB or Great Britain, or the views now would be greater than 10,000. So the query finds the title, country, and numbers of views of each video that is either from Great Britain or has more than 10,000 views. So every row, every video in the videos table would appear in the result set if it comes from Great Britain or if it has more than 10,000 views. Just a small question, do you think that there are some videos that fulfill both the conditions? So that there are... Uh, from Great Britain, and in addition, the views num is greater than 10,000. 
The answer is of course yes. Since this is an O operator, every video that comes from Great Britain would appear in the results and every uh, video that has more than 10,000 views would appear in the results. But it doesn't contradict the fact that the videos that uh, satisfies both the condition, that they are both from Great Britain and has more than 10,000 views, uh, satisfies the condition and appear in the results set. We can perform some calculations on the value we get and don't have to use only the uh, given values in the database. For example, let's find the titles, likes, and dislike numbers of videos that their likes number is more than 10 times of the dislikes number. For example, if we had a video that has 10 dislikes, I want the likes number to be at least 100, 10 times of the dislikes. So I'm using it like that. I'm selecting the V title, V likes num, and V dislikes num from videos V, and where V likes num greater than 10 times the V dislikes num. Take a note that the value here, the 10 multiplies by the dislike, is not a, an existing value in the database, but I'm calculating it, calculating it using the dislikes num, and then I can calculate the condition. So I have only uh, videos that the likes are uh, more than 10 times of the dislikes number. Here is an exercise for you. Find the title, views, and likes numbers of videos that the likes number is more than 10% of the total views. Again, I recommend to stop the video and try to do it by yourself. So here is the solution. After the selecting, the where clause is saying that the v likes num must be greater than 0.1 multiplies by the views num, which is 10%. So every video that its like number is, uh, uh, is bigger than 10% uh, of the views num would appear in the result set. We can calculate numbers uh, or values in the, in the select uh, statement uh, by itself. For example, Let's find titles and numbers of views they didn't like, nor dislike, where this number is bigger than half of the total views. This is a quite a complex uh, um, uh, uh, statement, so let's try to uh, make an example and see what I mean by that. So suppose we have a video that its views number is 1000, it has 100 likes and 50 dislikes. So the total numbers of likes and dislikes are uh, 150 which is the total number of people that uh, 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 saw the video and felt the, the urge to, to press like or dislike. They have to say something about the video. So, in the contrary, the number of views that didn't engage, it didn't have no, no uh, likes or no dislikes, is the views number minus the likes and dislikes. So it's, uh, in this example, 850. So, I want to find this number. I want to find the total numbers of views that didn't gain any like or dislike, and uh, assuming this number uh, is uh, more than half of the total views. So more of the total people who view the, this uh, video didn't mark it as like or dislike. So I'm using it like that. I, I'm selecting the video title, it's easy, and then take a look at the second uh, column. The second column is a calculated value. It's the value of views num minus the likes and the dislikes. So this is a new value that isn't appear in the database straightforward, but I have to calculate it. And again, in the view, in the where, I'm using this number, the views num minus likes and dislike, uh, to condition the, the result. So I want this number to be greater than half of the total views, so greater than 0 0.5 multiplied by the view nums. So if you take a look at this select, the, the calculated value in the select uh, clause uh, uh, in the result, I would see it with no name, because the, the first one is the title, and the title comes from the database, but the second value is a calculated value, and it doesn't appear straightforward in the database. So I would get uh, some kind of column uh, question mark or something like that in the column name. This can be very confusing if I have a lot of calculated values and I want to differentiate them. So it can be very convenient to rename this calculated value and give it a name of our own for the sake of this query. And I'm using it using the as keyword. The as keyword is the aliasing. And I'm saying to the database something like that. 
give me the title and give me the value calculated by this phrase and call this value none. In this example, I'm calling it none uh, to indicate that uh, this number represents uh, views that are none. Uh, likes or dislikes, but you can call it, of course, whatever you want. The 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 advantage the advantage here is that I'm uh, calculating a value and naming it in a name that can be identified later on when I'm uh, seeing the results. Especially if you have a lot of calculated values, you want to differentiate them to know which one represents what uh, value. So the aliasing here, the renaming of the column in another name, is very convenient. So here is an exercise for you. Try to do it. It consists of all the things we've learned in this lecture. Suppose YouTube had discovered a fraud in the numbers of views of videos from Germany from categories 1 and 10. So it's suspected that the number of views is forged in some way and they want to compensate the number and they decide to reduce 10% of the total views, the likes and the dislikes numbers. So try to write a query in this way that finds the title of video for Germany from categories 1 and 10 and display their new numbers of views, likes and dislikes. Call the new calculated value reduced views, reduced likes and reduced dislikes. So again, try to do it by yourself. And now let's look at the solution. We start the solution with the end of the query. Uh, first of all, from videos, of course, and then let's try to elaborate the where. The videos that answer the question must be first of all from Germany. So I'm starting the way with the VCID equals to DE, which is abbreviation from Deutschland, Germany. And then I, it's not enough. I want that the video will also be from category 1 or 10. So I'm using here the OR statement, V cut ID equals to 1 or V cut ID equals to 10. It must be either one of them, not both of them together, of course, either one of them, and the video must be from Germany. So this condition uh, uh, says the, the, the terms, uh, uh, assume the terms. Then I'm going to the select. In the select, I want to find the title, so select the title, and I want to reduce 10% of the total uh, number of views. So I'm using, if I'm reducing 10%, what's left is 90%. So I'm using the calculation 0 0.9 multiplied by views num, and I want to rename this calculation reduced views. So I'm using as reduced views. And now after the comma, I complete the next calculations. 0 0.9 multiplies V likes num, and I'm calling it reduced likes. And 0 0.9 multiplies by dislike num, and I'm calling it redu as reduced dislikes. So this query satisfies the, the, the assumption in above. And as usual, you can find the answer to all the 10 queries you've seen in this lecture in the additional resource file in this lecture. And I am uh, truly uh, recommend you to try and run those queries by yourself and see what are the results of the queries and how the results look like in a real database. So this was the Where Klaus uh, lecture. Let's see you in the next lecture. Hi. In this video, we'll see how to compare strings using the like operator. We saw earlier that we can match strings using the equal signs, like that. Select video title from video V, where v.cid equals to ca. This query finds all the video titles that originated in Canada. But sometimes we want to ask more interesting questions about strings. For example, give me all the titles of videos that begin with the letter A. Or give me the tag words that have exactly three letters. Or give me the tag words that, more, that have more than one word. All those questions can be answered using pattern matching. The like operator in SQL can be written in the where clause and it's used to match patterns of strings. We can describe a general pattern and then all strings that match this pattern would satisfy the condition and would appear in the result set. The like operator uses two symbols to define a pattern. The first one is the underscore. The underscore represents exactly one character, but it doesn't indicate which character. And the percentage sign represents zero or more characters. If the percentage sign appears, we know that the pattern we want to see is zero or more characters. We can again the like operator by using the not like combination. So let's look at some examples. Here is the tags table that contains the phrases and the, uh, the original videos of them, the VID and the CID. 
And let's uh, write the first query, find all tag words that begin with the letter A. This is done using this query, select t.phrase from tags t, where t.phrase like A and the percentage sign. Take a note that all the, the expression is enclosed by a single quote mark. So now every, uh, every uh, a string that starts with A and follows with a, a zero or more characters would fulfill the, the condition and appear in the result set. And what do you think would happen if we write uh, the query like that? Select the T phrase from tags T, where T phrase like A, just A. And the answer is we get all the phrases that are exactly A with no other uh, uh, permutations or variations. Let's look at another query, find all the tag words that begin with the letter A or capital A. So in the where clause, I'm using the or operator, where T phrase like A and the percentage sign, or T phrase like capital A and the percentage si sign. So every phrase that fulfills one of the conditions would appear in the result set. Another query, let's find the tag words that contains exactly three letters. To do so, I'm using the underscore sign. I'm using in the where clause where t dot phrase like and three underscores. It looked like one single line, but I typed three underscores. And since each underscore represents a single character, I, in this query, I enforcing the string to contain exactly three characters. I don't mind which characters, but they must be three of them. Another query, let's find phrases that contain at least two words. When I'm, when I'm saying words, I'm, I'm referring to the space between them. So if uh, there are two uh, sequence of characters that contain space between them, I'm referring it as two words. So in the where clause, I'm writing where t dot phrase like the percentage sign, space, there is a space between them, and another percentage sign. You may ask yourself what would happen if the phrase would contain more than three words and the, uh, the answer is that this phrase would appear in the result set. The, uh, the reason is that the second percentage sign can take uh, in it uh, zero or more characters, every character. So the first space here, I'm uh, in the first space, I enforce the, the string to contain one space. But after this condition fulfilled, so there was a sequence of characters and then a space uh, later that follows is another sequence of characters that can consist in another uh, space or spaces. So this is at least two words, but not exactly two, two words. Another query, let's find tag words that don't end with the Y letter. So here we can use the not like operator. In the where class, I'm using where T dot phrase, not like, and the percentage sign and y. So here I'm trying to match every phrase that uh, has a sequence of characters but ends with a y, and then I'm taking only those that doesn't fulfill this, uh, this condition. So here is a little exercise for you. Try to write a query that finds tag words of videos from Canada or Great Britain that starts and end with the letter A. And again, I'm encouraging you to stop or pause the video for a little while, try to do it by yourself, and then go on to the solution. So, here is the solution. Select t phrase from tags t, and then I'm using a, a detailed a condition which saying something like that. First of all, I want the country to be Canada or Great Britain, so I'm using this complex condition where t.cid equals ca or t.cid equals gb. And then I'm adding another compulsory condition, a mandate condition, the phrase must begin with A and ends with A. So I'm using the, the pattern A, the percentage sign, and another A, which ensure me that every string that comes to the, this condition must start and ends with A. In the middle, there can be zero or more characters. So this was the like operator and not like operator. And as usual, you can find all the queries uh, solutions in the additional resources of this lecture. Hi, in this lecture, we'll uh, see how to work with dates and times. We saw that in the videos table, we add the publish time property, the publish time column that represent the, the time the uploader published the video. 
The type of this column is timestamp, and timestamp represents a full time and date, such as this date, which contains a date and a time together in one string. We can of course ask about specific timestamps. For example, we can select all the titles of video where v.publish time equals to this string. This would give us the exact uh, videos and exact time. But of course, this is very awkward way to, to ask questions. We want to be able to ask other questions such, uh, such, such as which videos were published in a specific date, no matter the time, and which videos were published in up to a week from now, or which videos were published in November. So we're going to see some manipulation that can be done on the timestamp property that can uh, allow us to ask those questions and many others. We can use the between operator for querying about time intervals. For example, let's write a query that finds video titles and publish times that was published between November 1st, 2017 and November 15th, 2017. So I'm selecting the video title and the publish time from the videos, and then in the where I'm writing where v dot publish time between 11 uh, 1st of November and 15th November, and take a note that I'm writing here the the intervals edges as strings, but it doesn't matter because the between operator can take any form of timestamp and generate an interval between them. So here, when I'm writing two in two dates. As dates, not as, as uh, times, the between operator takes them and generates an interval between the 1st November and 15th of November and uh, checking if the published time, the concrete published time, found between them. The timestamp types save the date and the time, but suppose we want to see only the date. We can do it by using the date function. For example, let's write a query that finds video titles and published date without the time. I just want to see the date itself. So I'm using it like that, select v.title, comma, date of a v.publish time. Here I'm taking the publish time and uh, uh, passing it to the date function, so the result is only the date part of the timestamp. And another query using it, find video titles and publish time that was published on November 12, 2017. Here again, I want to ask only on the date. I, I don't care of the hour. I don't care if the video was published at 9 uh, in the morning or 9 in the evening, as long as it was published in uh, November 12th. So, so I'm using it like that in the way I'm writing where date of published time equals to date of 12-11. Uh, so take a look that here I'm, uh, I, I'm activating the date function on the published time. So I'm formatting the date or taking only the date part and activating again on this string, the 11, 12, 2017, to, uh, to uh, transform it into a date uh, operator or date type that I can compare between them. We can isolate specific parts for the from the timestamp value using the date part function. This function accepts the part of date we want to isolate and the timestamp value. The parts that we can use can be day or month or year or minute, etc. Any other time unit we can use about it. The part can also be epoch, which returns the timestamp as number of seconds from uh, January 1st, 1970, which he called also Unix time. The parts can also be DOW, which stands for day of the week. This uh, uh, word returns the day of the week of the date, which is uh, 0 for Sunday, 1 for Monday, etc., until 6 for Saturday. For example, let's find titles of video that was published in November. So in the where, I'm using the date part. I'm, ask, I'm activating the date part uh, on the two parameters, and I'm uh, passing the parameter month and the v.publish date, which means I want to take out or, or get the month from the specific published date and see if it equals to 11, which is November. Every published date uh, that uh, is arriving in this uh, format would uh, lead to true and be in the result set. Let's find titles of video that was published after uh, 22, after 10 p.m. So I'm again selecting the title with date part, and here I'm passing the parameter hour. I want to extract the hour part of the published time and greater than 22. 
Intervals are objects that represent difference in time. We can define intervals of any time unit, such as day, minutes, hour, month, and so on. And the function now gives the current date and time. So we combine the both of them to gain some kind of intervals with any kind. For example, the expression now, minus one day, and then I'm writing double column interval, is just represent yesterday. But actually, I can use any kind of interval. For example, I can say now plus a two month interval, and it will give me the time of two months from now. So let's see an interesting query. Find titles of video that was uploaded more than one year from now, one year ago. So here in the where, I'm using the where publish time, smaller than, and I'm generating an interval. One year ago is now minus one year, and don't forget the double column interval. Now the smaller than is a little bit confusing, but smaller than is earlier than actually. So I'm uh, generating the interval, which is one year ago, and I'm selecting only the, the videos that the publish time is earlier than this timestamp. So, in this lecture, we saw some manipulation we can do on the timestamp objects, and they are very useful. There are a lot of other manipulations that can be done, but we don't see them in this course, but I highly recommend you to go and find in the documentation page, in the formal documentation page, any other function you may need. See you in the next lecture. Hi. In this lecture, I want to go over a mathematical uh, function called the Cartesian product and see its implementation on databases. The Cartesian product, also known as cross product of two tables, is a new table that contains every combination of row from the first table with row from the second table. For example, let's take those two tables we've seen in the beginning of the course, the students table that saves data on students and the courses table. If we will perform a cross product, a Cartesian product over those two tables, and we indicated it by the cross sign, we'll get a new table. The number of columns of this new table is the combination of the columns of the two uh, participant uh, tables. So in, in this table, we get a total of seven columns, that, that those are the sums of the four columns from the students table and the three columns from the courses table. And then we go over the rows. We start with the first row in the student table, and then with the first row in the courses table, and get in the combined table this huge row that contains all the data from the first row in the student table and the first row in the courses table. And then we stay on the student table, but go to the second row in the courses table and get this row in the combined table. And in this row, the, the, the values are from the first row in the students table and the second row in the courses. And here is this, the third one. We stay on the first row in the students table, but go over to the third row in the courses table and get this third row in the combined table. And then when we've done with the, all the three rows in the courses table, we go to the second row in the students table and then all over again to the first row in the courses table and get this row. And if we continue the, the process, we'll get this huge table. And as we saw earlier, the number of columns found in the combined table is the summation of the columns in the two participants' table. The number of rows, the total rows in the combined table, consists of the multiplications of the rows in the first table multiplied by the rows in the courses table. So in this table, we get a total of 12 rows. You can also see that every combination of data from the first table and the second table is present in the combined table. For example, if we take this row, the row that talks about Sarah Barker, and we talk this row, the row that talks about the course Intro to CS, we found, find the combined data of both of those rows in the combined table in this row. So this is the Cartesian product or cross product of two tables, meaning that we take two tables and just create a new huge table that consists all the combinations of rows from the first and the second tables. In the next lecture, we'll see how we implement it in the database. Hi. In the previous lecture, we've seen the Cartesian product, and in this lecture, I want to show you how the Cartesian product is implemented in a select query. 
So, as you remember, we saw the structure of the select query, and in a manner of the order of execution, we know that first of all, the database engine performs the form clause, so it fetches data from the tables, and then it activates the where clause, so it filters out all the rows that uh, don't satisfy the conditions, and then the database engine selects the columns, the specific columns we, with, uh, written in the select clause. Up until now, we used only one table and we retrieve data only from one table. But actually, we can use as many tables as we want in the form clause. And what is happening is that the form clause is performing a Cartesian product of all the tables. The database engine automatically performs a Cartesian uh, product. Let's look at our real YouTube database. Uh, for example, let's try to retrieve data, to so select data from two tables, the countries and the categories. So the countries table contains only five rows, all the countries we're dealing with in this database. The categories table contains 32 rows, and here I'm presenting only some of them. And if I'm performing the, the Cartesian product over those two tables, I want to show you how it looks in the database. So let's go on to the Postgres shell. So first of all, let's try to see what's inside those tables. So this is the countries table. You see five rows. It tells you that there's a, there are five rows. And now let's select from the categories table. Okay, in the categories table, this is all the, the rows. And we see there are 32 rows. And now let's perform a, a two queries about those two uh, tables. For example, select, let's, let's uh, make it a c.country and see the ti uh, cut the title from country C and categories cut. Okay, as you can see, I'm selecting two uh, columns, the country and the title. But the country is a country name. You can see it here. This is the column that comes from the countries table, and the title is the title of the category which comes from the categories table. So I'm performing here the aliasing. You see that I'm calling the countries table C and the categories table cut. So I'm selecting the country from the countries table and the title from the categories table. When I'm running this query, I'm getting this huge table. You can see that I'm getting two columns as expected, but take a look at this uh, first uh, line, first five uh, rows. The five rows contains the same title, film and animation, which is the first row in the categories table. But then we have five different countries, Canada, United States, Great Britain, Germany, and France. And then we have another category, autos and vehicles, and again, five of them, and again, all the countries, Canada, United States, and so on. And as you can uh, notice, every category is ju just uh, repeat itself five times for each country, or you can look at it otherwise, every country repeats itself from each category. So we get all the cross product of countries and categories. If I run the query down downward, we can see all the combinations. So this is how the, the Cartesian product is really executed in a select query. Of course, that doing this select query over countries and categories and getting all those uh, results doesn't mean anything really in the, in the world. In the next, next lecture, we'll see how to take advantage of the Cartesian product to produce real results from our database. So see you in the next lecture. Hi. So now that we know that the Cartesian product is implemented in the from clause of the query, let's see how to make something useful out of it. So let's look at this query. We want to find for each video its title and its category. If we recall our tables, we try to find out where the data is located. So the data about the video titles is, of course, located in the videos table. But the data about the categories title is found in the categories table. So we have to, to fetch the data from two different tables, the categories and the videos. So this is the part of the categories table, and this is a very small part of the videos table. To mix those tables together, we have to make the Cartesian product. So the result of the Cartesian product, here I'm writing only a shortened of the, of the tables, is this huge table.
In this table, we see a combination of each row from the videos tables with a row from the categories tables. For example, this first video, the Rooster Teeth Animated Adventures, for example, is found in the, in the combined table with every of the categories uh, row. So we can find it, for in this example, three times for each category. And this row in the videos tables appears again three times in the combined table. And of course, it's only a small example. In the real database, every row from the videos uh, table would appear with every rows of the categories table. So now let's look at the combined table. And we can see that a lot of the rows contains data that is really unuseful for us. Uh, because the, uh, we, we can see that this data, these rows, doesn't say anything about the real data. But there are two common colo columns for the two tables, the category ID. And we can see that the category ID, for example, in the first row is equal. So we know that the uh, first video, the Rooster Teeth Animated Adventures, is coming from the fill and animation category. Because the category ID number, which is the primary key, in the categories table and the foreign key in the video table is identical in both rows. So the combined row, the huge row that in a matter of fact consists of part of the row is from the videos and part of the row is from the categories, is talking about a real data item from the database because we see that the category ID is identical. So now let's go back to our query and try to build up the query. So let's start from the form clause. First of all, I'm, I'm saying to the, I'm telling to the database engine from which data, uh, table I want to retrieve the data. So from videos V and categories cut, and as we saw earlier, this operation performed the Cartesian product, and we get a huge table with all combinations of rows from videos and categories. Now we saw that most of the rows are just junk. They, does, they don't say anything interesting about the real data. But we are interested in the, in the rows that the, in the category ID value, they have the same category ID. So we're just writing the where condition where v.catID equals to cat.catID. This condition eliminates all the rows that don't satisfy the condition and leave us only with the rows with the real interesting data, which means the rows that combines part of the row from a video table and part of the rows from the categories tables, but they are the same thing. They are, they're talking about the same thing. Now, after we've done that, we can select only the columns that interested us. So we're, we're making select v.title and cat.title and getting only the columns we want. So in this example, the only results would be the Rooster Teeth animated adventures with the film animation and the second video in French, I can't read it, with the auto and vehicles uh, title. And just take a note that in this example, when we are retrieving data from multiple tables, the aliasing, the, the operation of giving a rename for the, for the videos tables and the category tables is really helpful because we, saw, we see that there are duplicate columns, for example, the category ID or the title that coming from videos and from categories tables. So it's much easier to separate between the two of them and identify them by using the alias. So this is the query, and this condition is called, is called join. The join is operation of getting uh, data from two or more tables, and then uh, filter out all the rows that, doesn't, uh, contain, that don't contain any interesting data. And we are uh, using the join, or performing the join, accounting on the common columns of the tables. In this example, we are using the fact that the category ID is the same category ID, or it's talking about the same data item in both tables, and we're using this fact to eliminate all the other rows that uh, don't uh, satisfy the condition, and we are staying only with the interesting uh, rows. This is a very powerful and useful operation. Let's look at another example. Find for each video its title and the name of the country it came from. So again, if, if we look at the database, we see that the title of the video is found in the videos table, but the country name is found on the countries table. And every video has the CID, the, the country ID for which it came from, so we can relay on this CID to pay, make the join. So here is the, the query, select video title and C.country from videos V and country C, and then we're performing the join 
with v.cid equals to c.cid. So we're filtering out all the rows that don't satisfy this condition and staying only with the rows that have the same country ID, which means that they have the same country. And this is another query. Find for each tag word the video title it belongs to. So again, this is our database. And if you can remember, the tags table contain a lot of phrases and each phrase can, be, can belong to one video. But this is a, a little trickier query because the, the foreign key in the tags table is actually two columns, the VID and the CID. Because if we want to identify a uniquely a video, we, we have to um, supply the, the video ID and the country ID because only those, both of them can uniquely identify each video. So here I want to choose the phrases and for each phrase I want to to uh, give the title of the video these phrases came from so I have to filter out all the videos that doesn't uh, uh, match so I'm using it like that select t.phrase and t video title from tags t and videos v and here look at the join the join is actually uh, consists of two conditions where t.vid equals to v.vid and t.cid equals to v.cid because I want to filter out all the rows that don't satisfy this condition because in this case the, col the common columns uh, are columns in plural and not only one column so to perform the join we have to ask about both of them. So this is the join operation, a very powerful operation that allows us to take several tables and match them together in order to find data that is found in a different positions and not only in one table. So in the next lecture we see more complex join queries. Hello everyone, in this lecture we continue to see the joins and see more complex joins queries. So let's look at this query. We want to find the titles of videos that came from Canada. So in, in matter of fact, in the previous videos, we've seen how we did it because the videos, as you can remember, has the CID column. And the CID is just the primary key of the country. But as if you can remember, this country ID in YouTube is saved by two letters. For example, Canada is CA and uh, Great Britain is GB. And, uh, and uh, what we've done in the previous lecture, in previous uh, queries, that we uh, uh, said uh, that where CID equals to CA or something like that. But this is very problematic uh, method of uh, querying because the code of the country it doesn't necessarily known to us as users. Uh, but we do know that the country name is Canada or Great Britain or United States or any other logical name. So we don't want to rely on the country code that can be uh, some uh, random uh, number or random letters or anything like that. We want to ask the country name and we want to connect it to the CID of the videos. So the query is like that. We select in the video title form videos V and countries C since we want to ask about the country name and then we ask in the where, where C dot country equals to Canada and then we can ask about the full country name and don't have to rely on the country code but we want to perform the join so we'll be able to uh, match the, the real uh, video uh, title and we uh, adding the join v.cid equals to c.cid and in this way you can see that I'm avoiding uh, of writing the country code the CA or anything like that uh, but using the real country name as I know it and, uh, and connecting the two tables via the join operation. Let's see another query. Find titles of videos that came from Canada and had more than 1 million views. So this is a very popular video that came from Canada and I'm uh, bringing this uh, query to show you that we can uh, mix uh, also another uh, conditions in the world that doesn't connect it to the to the uh, to the join itself for example in this example again the CID gives us the country and we use it to uh, choose the Canada videos the Canadian videos and this is the select video title form videos V and country C and again where C dot country equals to Canada and V dot CID equals to C dot CID which is the join and then I'm adding the views num greater than 1 million the, this last condition assures me that only videos that uh, satisfy this term would uh, appear in the result and the, the combinations of all three conditions would give me what I want. Let's look at this query. 
we want to find titles and origin country of videos that the titles begins with the letter capital A and they have less than 1000 likes. So this is another example of very extended work conditions. So again, I, I want to select the title and the, 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 the country and the likes now. I want to see all those three uh, data uh, and from videos V and country C. And then I'm making the join where V.CID equals to C.CID. This is a join between the two tables. And then I'm adding the other conditions that they filter out any other unsatisfied rows. For example, the title is like A and the percentage mark would give us every a string that they start with the capital, capital A and the likes num is a smaller than 1000. So we can see that we can combine a lot of other conditions in addition to the join to get very complex uh, queries and get very uh, accurate and specific uh, data items for the database. This query we want to uh, find for each video to find its title, the origin country and the category. So now we can try to find out where the data is located. We know that the country itself, the country name, is located in the countries table and we can access it via the CID column that is the, actually the, the foreign key and the primary key. And the category is located in the categories table which connected to the videos table via the cat.underscoreid column. So here we want to join three tables and not only two. And I'm doing it like that. Select video title, c.country, and cat.title. This is the columns I want to see in the result from videos v, country c, and categories cat. This is the first time we see join of three tables, but the Cartesian product works the same. But here we'll get a very huge table that contains every single combination of row from video and from countries and from categories. This is a very huge table. And of course, we have to filter out all the rows that doesn't, don't satisfy the condition. So I want to uh, filter uh, where v.cid equals to c.cid. So I'm getting only the real countries. And v.catid equals to cat.catid. So I want to filter only the real categories. And in this example, I'm combining data from three tables and get all the real items for, from the join. And let's see another query. For each tag word, find the category it belongs to. So again, the tags uh, table contains phrases and each phrase uh, is belonging, belongs to a single video. So we want to uh, access the video via the v dot underscore id and c underscore id. And this is the, the, the data we want. But actually, as you can see, I, I don't need anything from the videos tables. I need the category. And the category is achieved via the cat ID. And via the cat ID, I'm getting to the categories table and get the title. So this is a very nice example in which I do have to retrieve the data from categories, videos, and tags. But the videos tables, if you can uh, uh, note about it, the videos tables uh, is actually using here as a pivot table. I'm just using it as a, a mediator to get the, the data I want from the tags and from the categories data. So this is the query, select t.phrase and cat.title, and again take a note that I'm not selecting any column from the videos table because I don't want anything from it, I just want the phrase and the category title. But to achieve the category title, I must go through the videos table because this is the only table that connects between the tag word and the category it came from. So there goes the join t.vid equals to v.vid and t.cid equals to v.cid. Those are the joins from the tags table. And the v.catid equals to cat.catid that give us the title of the category. And there is a little exercise for you. Try to find all the tag words of videos from Great Britain in the music category, the category that calls music. So again, I recommend you to stop the video right here. So let's see the, the solution. The data is found in a several uh, uh, tables. We have the Great Britain country, so we have the countries table. We need the music category, so we need the categories table. And we want the tag word, so we need the tags table. But to achieve the country and the category, we must go 
through the videos table so we have to add it to our select query so the query contains actually a join for from all four tables so this is it select t dot phrase this is the only a thing we want to select but to achieve this, this thing we have to go through a lot of conditions from all those tables tag t videos v countries c and categories cat and then i'm performing all the joins the first two conditions are the joins from tags to videos where t dot v id v underscore id equals to v dot v underscore id and t dot c id equals to v dot c underscore id this would give us only the tags that belongs to the videos and then I want to achieve the country title, so I'm joining the videos table to the countries table, v.cid equal to c.cid, and I want to achieve the, the category title, so I'm joining the video table to the category table, v.catid equals to cat.catid. And then the other two conditions that I must satisfy uh, that doesn't connect to any a join but I must uh, do, do that to perform the right query. So c.country equals to Great Britain, this ensures me that I'm uh, getting only tag words from videos from Great Britain and cut the title equals to music, which gives me only the music category. So this is the query as again, as usual, you can find all the source code for the queries in the additional resources of this lecture. So this is uh, some more complex joins and in the next section, let's go on to more complex query methods. Hi guys, in this lecture, we see the aggregate functions. Up until now, the results of our queries were rows that satisfy conditions. The aggregate functions allow us to summarize values that appear in multiple rows and get a single result. The first aggregate function we see is count, which actually count rows. So let's see the next query. We want to find how many videos there are in the database. To find that, we use an aggregate function called count and we use this query select count of v.vid from videos v. The count function runs over the database, over the videos database, and just count how many times the vid found in the database. So the result is a table that contains a single column, the count column, and a single row, which represents the result of the counting. In this case, this is 141 rows, if you are interested. We can ask the same query in this manner, select count of v.likesNum from videos v, and we'll get the same result. In a matter of fact, no matter which column we will write in the parentheses of the count function, we'll get the same counting, because the count function just runs over the, the table and counts rows. From this reason, this is usually most, more common to call the count function like that, select count asterisk from videos v, because we doesn't uh, really interested in a single column. Uh, on the contrary, we, we are interested in all the rows. So count asterisk just save us the effort of writing a single column. Let's see another query, find how many different categories there are in the database. So in this case, we have to count the rows in the categories table, and it looks like that. Select count asterisk from categories. The rest of the aggregate functions are max, which maximize a single value, mean, which minimize a single column, avg, which is the average of a column, and sum, that sums up uh, values in a single column. So let's see some example. What is the maximum number of views a video gains? Here we are interested in the column called views num, which every video has, and now we want to maximize it. Select max of v.views num from videos v. The result will be a table that contains a single column, which is the max column, and a single row. In this uh, case, if you are interested, the maximum number of views is 33 million. So here we must indicate a single uh, and concrete column because we are maximizing concrete value. So here we cannot use the asterisk notation we used in the previous query. What is the minimum number of views of video, uh, a video game? This is uh, performed by the mean uh, aggregate function. Select mean of v.viewsNum. The max mean ever and sum function must be activated on numeric values. For example, the next query would result in a runtime error. Select max of v.title. We cannot possibly maximize the title of a video, so this query would lead to a runtime error of the database engine. Let's see this query. 
what is the maximum difference between the total views and the likes number of some video? We know that each video has its own views num, how many people just view the number, and in addition it has the likes num, how many people not only view the video but hit the like button. We want to find the difference between those two numbers, the views num minus the likes num, and we want to maximize it. We want to find the maximum difference between those two numbers. So to do so, we can maximize an arithmetic expression. We can still use the aggregate function, but in this time, we, we don't maximize a single column, but we maximize a calculation. Select max for, of v.viewsNum minus v.likesNum from videos v. And we can use the opposite, the minimum. What is the minimum difference between the total uh, and the likes number of videos? And we use it with the mean operation. And see this query, what is the maximum and the minimum difference between number of views and the likes number of some video? Here we can use again in the, uh, in the comma notation and we can select a number of uh, values, a number of aggregate functions from, this, from the same query. For example, select max of v views num minus v likes num and we're using the alias as max diff comma, and mean of v.viewsNum minus v.likesNum is mean diff. In this query, we'll get a table that contains two columns, the first one called max diff, the second one called mean diff, and it contains one row that contains those two values. We can select aggregate function with regular column in the same query. For example, let's try to find the maximum number of views and the name of the video that got this number. This is a, might be a very useful query because we don't only want to see the maximum number of views, we want to see the title of the video. So we might try to do it like that. Select video title, this is the title of the video, comma, and max of v.viewsNum. But as, as far as this query concerned, this query is an error. We cannot combine or mix together in the select query the video title, which is a regular column, and the aggregate function. The reason is that the max of views num returns only one number, the maximum value. But video title, as we see it like that, returns all the titles in the database, so it doesn't match. The database engine cannot understand what, what it have to select, because it, uh, in the first uh, select column it should select the all titles, and in the second column it should select only one value. So this uh, query, and in general, queries that combines together in, uh, aggregate functions and regular columns are disallowed in the SQL language. So here is a little exercise for you. Find the average dislikes numbers of all videos. So to find the average dislikes, we, use, we have to use the AVG function. This is it. Select AVG of v dot dislikes num from videos v. So in this video, we saw the aggregate function, which are very useful to gain a lot of statistical information about the database. See you in the next lecture. Hello everyone, in this video we continue to discuss the aggregate functions and now we'll add them the where clause. So let's try to see this query. We want to find out how many videos that the title starts with the letter D are there. So here we cannot use only the count asterisk function because we don't want to count all the videos. We want to filter out all the videos that don't, that don't contain or don't start with a capital D. So this is the query, select count asterisk from videos B, but here we add the where clause where video title like D. So now the count asterisk is activated only after the where clause is performed, so only after the database engine filter out all the titles that don't start with capital D, the count asterisk function go on and counts all the video that left. Let's see another example. Find the maximum number of likes for a video that had not more than 10,000 views. So we know that each video has its own number of views. We want to take all the videos that contains 10,000 views at most, not more than that, and find the maximum number of them all. So again, we use the where clause, we select the max of v.likesNum from videos v, but we add the where clause where v.viewsNum is smaller than 10,000. 
So first of all, the database engine go over the, the table and filter out all the, the videos that contains more than 10,000 views. And then the max function goes over the result and selects only the maximum number of what's left. In the next query, we want to find out how many videos from Canada are there. So here we have to use the join because the data is found on the videos table and the countries table because we want to uh, mention the Canada name. So select count asterisk from videos V and countries C. We get a huge table with the Cartesian product and then we perform the join where V.CAD equals to C.CAD which gives us only the relevant uh, rows, and then we filter out all the rows that doesn't satisfy the, the next condition, which c.country equals to Canada. In the next query, we want to find the average number of views of video from Germany on the comedy category. In this query, the data is found in three tables, the videos tables, of course, and the countries tables to, to gain the name of the country, the Germany country, and the categories table to gain the comedy country category. So this is the select query, select average of v.viewsNum from videos v, countries c, categories cut, and then we perform the joins. We have two joins here, v.cad equals to c.cad and v.cat.id equals to cat.cat.id and then we perform the rest of the conditions where the country equals to Germany and the category title equals to comedy. Find how many tag words belong to a video which uh, its ID is this string. We know that each video in the YouTube database contains an ID, and this ID is a random uh, characters, a string of random characters, and I want for a particular video to count how many tag words belong to it. So I'm using this query, select count asterisk from tags t, where t.vid equals to this query, this string. Let's see this query. Find how many times there is a tag word which is its name of a country which is the country from which the video came. This is a very complex uh, query, so let's I uh, try to uh, to explain it. We know that every video comes from a specific country. So suppose we have a video that comes from Canada. Now I want to to count the video if it also has a tag word that is Canada. And if a video is coming from Great Britain, I want to count, count, count it if it also contains a tag word that contains the word Great Britain. So I want to count videos that uh, contain tag words that are the name of the countries they, are, they were uploaded from. So it's very complicated the query. Sele select count asterisk because I'm counting things. things. So I need to select from tags T, videos V, and countries C. I perform the join t.vid equals to v.vid and t.cad equals to v.cad. This is the join from the tags and the videos. And we have another join, v.cad equals to c.cad. This is a, this connects the videos table to the uh, countries tables. And then I want to uh, equals to compare the t.phrase, the actual tag word, to the country. And I'm uh, selecting only the videos that contains a phrase word, the tag word, that is the country of the origin. So in this video, we elaborated on the aggregate function. We saw how we can use them in addition to where clouds to gain more insights about the database we, because we could write more complex queries with the conditions. Hi, guys. In this lecture, I want to talk with you about sets operation, which are operation from mathematical sets theory, which would help us later on in our SQL queries. We can look at queries results as a set of rows. Each row in the result is an element in the set. Each row has the same structure. It has the same number of columns, the same order, and the same types of each column. From mathematical set theory, we know three operations that can be performed on sets. The operations are union, intersection, and minus. Let's see those operations in detail. The first one is union. 
given two sets, A and B, we say that the union of them, denoted like that, is a new set contains all the elements from A and from B together. For example, if the set A contains the elements 1, 4, 5, 7, and 8, and the set B contains the elements 1, 5, 6, 8, and 12, the union set of those two sets is these sets, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 12. You can see that every element from A or from B is found in the union set. You can also note that there are no duplication. For example, the element 1 found in A and in B, but it appears only once in the union set. The intersection is like that. Given again two sets, A and B, we say that the intersection of them, denoted like that, is a new set contains all the elements which are common to A and to B together. So again, if the sets are like that, the, the intersection will, would contain only the elements that are common to those two sets. For example, we can see that the 1 is, appears in A set and appears in B. So 1 would be in the intersection set. But 4, for example, is found only in A set, so 4 wouldn't be in the intersection set. So you can look at it and see that the only elements that appear in both sets are 1, 5, and 8. And this is the intersection sets of those two sets. The minus operation is like that. Given two sets, A and B, we say that the minus of them, denoted as A minus B, is a new set contains all the elements from A that are not found in B. For example, we can see here that 1 appears in A and in B. So since it appears in, in both sets, it wouldn't be in the minus uh, set. But if we look at the 4 element, 4 appears in A but doesn't appear in B. So 4 would be in the minus set. And in this manner, we can see that 5 is not belong, it doesn't belong to the minus set, but 7 does because 7 found in the A set but isn't found in the B set. So this is the minus set of A minus B, 4 and 7. Let's talk about the empty set. If a set doesn't contain any element in it, we say it's empty, and we denote it by a, a empty curly brackets or this symbol of phi or phi. For example, if we take these two sets A and B, which are 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, we can see that there is no inter intersection, because if we try to intersect A and B, there are no common elements. So the intersection of A and B is the empty sets. It doesn't contain any elements. So in this short lecture, we saw the basic of set, sets operations and sets theory. And in the next lecture, we'll see how we can use those three operations, union, intersection, and minus, in an SQL queries to gain more and more complex ideas and data from the database. So see you in the next lecture. Hello, everyone. In the previous lecture, we saw the set operation that uh, was done in the mathematical set theory. And in this lecture, we see how we can implement those operations on the SQL queries. So in the set theory, we have the union, intersection, and minus operation. Let's see how those operations are translated into SQL command. So the union is called union in SQL. The intersection is called intersect. And the minus is called except. Let's see examples for the usage of those operations. So the first query we want to find is to find videos from Canada or United States. We already saw this kind of uh, query in the beginning of the course, uh, and we saw that in the where clause we can uh, select all the videos that the country is either Canada or United States. Now I want to show you how to do it with the, the set operation. So if we look at this query, we see that it, the result actually uh, is consists of two uh, small queries. The first one are the videos from Canada. So this query finds all the titles of videos that comes from Canada. You can see select video title from videos V, country C, and the join and C dot country equals to Canada. The second query, the second separate query, finds all the titles from, of videos that come from the United States. 
Now we have two separated queries, and the result of either query is a list of titles of videos that come from a specific state. Now I can use the union command. The union command takes the first set, the set of titles, and the second set, and join them together to a big set of titles, and I know that every title that's found either in the first or in the second group would be in the final result of this query. So we have here a huge query, a big query, that actually consists of two small ones that combine together using the union command. Here is another one. I want to find tag words that describe videos from Canada and from United States. We know that every tag word describes a certain video, and we know that every video comes from a certain uh, country. So I want to find the tag words that uh, are common to uh, videos that come from Canada and United States. So first of all, let's find all the tag words of videos that come from Canada. Okay, so this uh, query select key dot phrase from tags T, videos V, and country C, and then I perform in the join, and in the end, where C dot country equals to Canada. The second query select all the phrases or the tag words from vid of videos that come from the United States. So this is very similar uh, query. The result of those two queries is a list of phrases. The, the first one the, is, are phrases that describe videos from Canada, and the second one is a list of phrases that describe videos from the United States. What I am interested in is the intersection of those two sets. I want only phrases that are common to the first query and to the second query, so I'm using the intersect operation. And again, the result of this huge query is one list of phrases of tag words that the common uh, between them is that those phrases belong to the first query and to the second query. Let's see this, the third query. Find videos titles that were uploaded from Canada but not from United States. We know that every a, a title can be common to a, a lot of videos. So, for example, suppose that say, one person uploads a video called AAA from the United States, and another uploader uploads a video called AAA from Canada. So, there is no refrain of video to be called the same. So, I want to find the titles of video, but I want those videos to be uploaded only from Canada. So, again, let's find all the video titles that come from Canada. This first query gives me a list of titles that are common between those titles that they are described videos from Canada. Now, I, I'm getting this list, for example, AA, CCC, GGG, and KKK. Now, this second query finds me all the titles of video that uh, were uploaded from the United States. For example, I'm getting this list. Now, as you can see, some of the titles that are found in Canada also found in the United States. For example, AAA is the name of a video that was uploaded from Canada and from the United States. And since the query asked me to find the videos that are not from the United States, AAA is not interesting here, and GGG the same. But we can see that CCC and KKK that are found in Canada don't found in the, uh, in the United States, so I want to find only them. So I'm using the accept operation, which is the minus, and I'm subtracting all the videos of the United States from the list of Canada, and I'm getting what left. For example, only the CCC and KKK. The next query, we want to find videos titles that were uploaded from Canada and from the United States. So here, I, I, I want the videos titles that are common to both uh, countries, the videos that were uploaded uh, from both countries together, not only from one of them. So again, I'm using those two queries that give me the list of uh, videos that come from Canada and the list of videos that comes from the United States, and I want to intersect between them and get only the titles that come from both of the countries. Let's see another interesting query. Let's find categories that there are no videos from Canada that belong to those categories. So, the second query we want to write, uh, the first one right, but it's the second the huge one, would find us all the titles of video that were uploaded from Canada. So you can view this query and see that uh, we will get a list of titles that the uh, thing is common from all these titles that are categories for video that comes from Canada. Now let's select all the category titles that are exist in the database. 
So this uh, simple query select cut.title from categories cut, and I'm getting the list of all categories that exist. Now you can see that there are categories that exist in the all categories list that don't exist in the Canada list. And in this example, only the art category uh, does not appear in the Canada. So if I'm using the except, I'm subtracting the Canada list from the all categories. What is left is uh, only the categories that uh, has no video from Canada that belongs to them. This method called the complement. The complement is to find, if we want to find things that doesn't uh, ex exist in the database, we find the things that do exist, and then we subtract it from all the group. And what is left is only the thing that doesn't exist. The next query, we want to find videos IDs that are unique, which means the ID doesn't appear for another video. We know that the ideas of the YouTube database uh, are not unique because uh, two videos can have the same ID. What makes the videos unique is the combination of ID and country code. So a video with the ID of AAA, for example, can appear for one, more than one video, but the AAA from Canada can appear only once. So what I want to find are video ideas that do, do appear only once, that they are not appearing in any other country except one. So let's try to find easier question before that. The easier question is which IDs belong to more than one video? Because to find the IDs that belong only to one video is hard, let's find a more easier question. How can you find ideas that definitely belong to more than one video? Suppose this is the videos table. We have here, for example, just a small example, three videos. The first one is AAA that comes from Canada. The second one is BBB that comes from Great Britain. And the third one is also AAA, but it comes from the United States. Now let's multiply this table by itself and perform a Cartesian product. The result of this Cartesian product would be a huge table that contains nine rows and contains every row, row from the first table, which I called v1 with the a row from the second table which I called v2. This table contains a lot of unuseful information. For example, those rows don't give us any additional information because those rows, as you can see, let's look at the first one, is AAA from Canada with AAA from Canada. Those rows come uh, um, simple from uh, taking one row from v1 with the same row from v2, so I don't uh, get any useful information from those rows. We have another rows that uh, don't supply any additional information, those rows, for example. Let's see the first orange one. It talks about AAA from Canada with BBB from Great Britain. This row just taking two separate and unconnected uh, pieces of information and put them together. The, the first part, the left part, talk about AAA from Canada. The second one about BBB from Great Britain, but there is no connection between those two uh, information. But there are rows that are really interesting, and those are the rows. Let, let's look at the first one. The first one talks about AAA that comes from Canada, and the second part is again AAA but comes from the United States. This row comes from matching one row from the videos table with a different row but with the same ID. So we know this row talks about two different videos with the same video ID. So this row is a, a good uh, proof that the video AAA appear in more, more than one video, the title, uh, the ID, IAA. So now let's write the query. The query is like that. We select v1.vid from videos v, v1 and videos v2. This line performs the Cartesian product, and the result is this huge table. Now I want to select only the rows that uh, satisfy the condition, which this is the, f this, the same ID, but a different country. So I'm using the V1 VID equals to V2 VID, and V1 CID is different than V2 CID. And I'm getting those two rows. Now this is the list of ideas that I know are common of those ideas, that there are videos that appear in more, there are ideas that appear in more than one video. Now, if we go back to the original question, I don't want this list. I want the videos, the, the ideas that are unique, the videos that don't appear in more than one video. So now, let's select all the video ideas that exist in the database. So select VID from videos V, and I'm getting this uh, list, in this example, only two videos, AAA and BBB. 
And now, if I'm using the except and I'm sub subtracting the second list from the first one, I'm, I'm left only with the video that appears once. Because if BBB was uh, in more than one video, it would, it would have appeared in the second list. But since BBB doesn't appear in the second list, the except operation leave it in the result. Again, this operation is very useful and it's called the complement. The complement saying that in order to find some information, we uh, sometimes cannot find this information, information directly, so what we are doing is finding another information and then subtracting it from a huge other set to get the complement. So here is a, an exercise for you in this uh, example. Find the title of the video that gained maximum views number. We already saw that we can find the maximum number with the aggregate function, but we cannot combine the maximum number with the video title. So I want you to try to find the title of the video that gained the maximum number. So I highly, re highly recommend you to stop the video right now and try to do it by yourself. This query is very connected to the complement query we saw earlier. And after you try it by yourself, please go on and see the solution. So this is the solution. We cannot find directly the maximum uh, number of views without using the aggregate function, but we can definitely find all the videos that are not the maximum number of views. How we can do that? Let's try to multiply the video table by itself. Let's find uh, the select v1 dot title from videos v1 and videos v2. And again, I'm putting every row from the videos table in front of any other row of the videos table. And now take a look at the where clause. I'm asking here where v1 dot views underscore num is less than v2 views underscore num. So, the list of titles that I, ex I get from this query are titles of videos that are definitely not the maximum. Why they are not the maximum? Because I proved that there exists at least one other video that has higher number of views in it. Okay, so what I'm getting here is the list of videos that are definitely not the maximum uh, number of views. Now, let's take all the titles that exist in the database. The first query is select video title from videos V. Now, if I will take the second query and subtract it from the first one with the except, what is left is only the titles that are the maximum number of views. So this, again, the method of complement is taking what we don't want and subtracting it from all the entire set. And what we are left with are the, the results we do want. So in this video, we saw some uh, interesting queries that uh, allowed us to, to perform very complex operation using the sets operation. Hi guys. In this section, I want to start talking about linear queries or sub queries. Up until now, we used only one select statement in our queries. Using the set operation, we combine two separate queries into one result. Inner query is a query inside other query, which is called nested or sub query. Usually, the inner query retrieves partial results that the outer query then takes and exploits. Inner queries usually come in two places an inner query inside the where clause and an inner query inside the form clause. In this section, we'll see all kinds of variations of inner and sub queries inside the where clause. So see you inside the section. Hello everyone. In this video we learn about the in and the not in operators. Given a group of elements and another item, we would like to know whether this item belongs to the group or not. In SQL, we can test this condition using the in operator. For example, if we have this group of numbers 3, 4, 1, 6 and 5 and we have another item 1, we can ask whether 1 is in this group, and the result would be of course true. And if we ask whether 7 is in this group, the answer would be false. We can also ask about the opposite. For example, for the same group of elements and 1, we can ask whether 1 is not in this group, and the answer would be false, because 1 is indeed in the group. So not in is the opposite, and the logical opposite of the, of the in operator. And we can ask whether 7 is not in the group, and the answer would be true, because 7 is indeed not in the group.
If we take the standard structure of the select query, we can add the in operator, not in operators, in the where clause. We do it like that, we, we write the where and then value in or not in group of elements. Where the group of elements is usually the result set of another query, of an inner or sub query. So we generate a result from another query and then test a value one by one against this group. Let's see an example. I want to find video titles that came from Canada that were uploaded from Canada and from United States together. We saw this kind of query in the set operations and we know that each video has its own title, but the title is not unique. It is possible that, the set, the, that a video would have a title and the same title would be of another video from another country. So I want to find all those videos that has the common uh, the title that came from Canada and from United States. So I want to gather the uh, United States video. So uh, this is the inner query. I want to find an easy query that finds all the videos that come from United States. This is an easy query. We can do it like that. Select video title from videos V, country C, and again the join and the country equals to United States. This query finds all the video titles that came from United States. And now I want to find all the video titles that came from Canada. And this is also easy. I'm selecting the V title and again it's very similar except that the, the condition in the world is country equals to Canada. Now I want to find only videos that, found from Can that come from Canada and United States. So I'm using the end video title in and I'm nesting the inner query inside brackets. If we take a closer look about this query, the inner query, this is the inner query and the sub query, it generates all titles of video that were uploaded from United States. The outer query generates all titles of video that were uploaded from Canada. And the V title in is the operator that tests for every title from Canada if it exists in the group of titles of United States. So we have kind of nested loop structure, if you know from programming languages, that for each title from Canada, we test if it's also found in the group of titles from the United States. Only titles that satisfy this condition would be in the result of the global query. Let's see another qu uh, query, another example of the opposite example. Find video titles that came from Canada, but not from the United States. So again, this is very easy. We find the, the titles that come from United States, this is the same query, and the titles that come from Canada, which is again the same query. But now we are interested only in titles that are found in the Canada group, but not in the United States group. So I'm using here the not in operator. I'm adding to the word clause and video title not in the inner query. Now, for each title that came from Canada, I'm testing whether this title is not found in the inner query, in the, in the results of queries that came from the United States. Let's see another, a, a little bit more complicated example. Let's find video titles from category comedy that has the same number of views as at least other video in different categories. It sounds a little awkward, so let's take a, a toy example. This is a small, very small example of the table of uh, videos. And you can see that here we have two videos that are from the, 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 the category comedy, AAA and BBB. Okay, and we have two other videos that are not from a uh, comedy. Now you can see that AAA is 1000 views now, and we have another video that is not from comedy, which is the CCC uh, video that has also 1000 views. And so I want to take the AAA video as a result because I'm looking for videos from, from comedy that has the same number of views as other video. But if you look at the BBB video, which is also from com comedy category, it has 500 views, but there is no other video that is not from comedy that has 500 views. So this video BBB is not in the results. So what we want to do, the, the plan is something like that. Let's go over all the videos from comedy, starting with AAA. Now let's generate a list of all views numbers of videos that are not from comedy. And this is the list, the, the list of, uh, of uh, views numbers that is uh, as a green rectangle around. And now we test whether 
the 1000 of the AAA is found in the group of views number in the green rectangle and we see that it is found so AAA is part of the result. And now we go to the next video from comedy category which is BBB and again we generate all the number of views from other videos that are not from comedy and we see that the number of views of BBB 500 is not found in this green rectangle so BBB is not part of the result. So the plan here is like that. First of all, let's generate group of all views numbers of videos that are not from comedy category. Then, for each video from comedy category, if its number of views belongs to this group, then its title would be part of the result. So we do it like that. First of all, we generate all the number of views, take a look that this square will generate number of views, not titles, of videos that are not from category comedy. So we select the views now from videos and categories where v.cutid equals to cut.cutid and cut.title not equals to comedy. This uh, subquery would yield a list of numbers that the common to those numbers is that those numbers are number of views of videos that are not from the category comedy. Now let's generate all the titles of videos that come from comedy. And this is the query. Select v.title. Take a look. It's title, not number of views, because we are interested in the title. From videos categories and where cut the title equals to comedy. And now what we are interested in is where v dot views num is in the group of results from the inner query. So again, it works just like a nested loop in programming language. For each title, for each video from the outer uh, group, we test or we take its views number and test it against the inner result, the result, the result set of, of uh, numbers of, uh, of views numbers from not ca comedy category. This is a very common use to the in operator. And there is a small exercise for you. Try to find by yourself video titles from Canada that there is no video from the United States with the same category. Again, it sounds a little awkward, so let's take a, a small example. If this is the, the table, we, saw we, we, we want to find videos from Canada. So we, saw, we see here that there are two videos from Canada, AAA and BBB. So if we take the first one, the AAA, we saw that this video is from the category comedy. And if we take the group of, uh, of uh, videos that are not from Canada, we see that there is no other video that has the same category comedy. So AAA would be a good result. But if we take the second video, BBB, that is also from Canada, we see that BBB comes from the film category, but uh, there is another video that comes from the film category. So again, the strategy here is to, to go over all the videos from Canada. For example, take the first one and then generate a list of categories of all videos that are not from Canada. In this case, we get film and art. And now, we can uh, see that uh, the category of the first video, the AA, is comedy and there is no other video uh, in this group that is from comedy, so AAA is a good result of this query. But if we go over the second, the second line, we see that the BBB video is also from Canada, but its category is film, and we see that in the uh, green rectangle, there is another video that comes from film category, so we, we don't get it in the result. So again, the plan is something like that. Generate group of all categories of videos from the United States, and then for each video from Canada, if its category doesn't belong to this group, then its title would be part of the result. So take a, a few minutes to write this query by yourself, and then uh, come back and see the result. So again, this is the inner query, the subquery. I'm generating a list of categories that the common thing to those categories that they are all come from videos from the United States. And now the outer query generate titles of videos that all come from Canada. And now for each video in the Canada group, I want to make sure that the category ID is not in the results of the categories from the United States. And this would give me only titles for video from Canada that there is no other video from the United States with the same category. So this is the in and not in operator. Hi. In this video, I want to show you the all and any operator.
We saw earlier that using the in and not in operators, we could ask whether a value is found or not found in a group of elements. The all and any operators allow us to ask if a value has other relation with a group of elements, not only equals or not equals, such as bigger than or smaller than. Let's start with an example. This example we also saw in a lot of variation in the previous videos, find videos titles that have maximum number of likes. So first of all, let's generate the list of all likes numbers. Select V likes num from videos V. This query give us a list of numbers that represents a views numbers of all uh, likes numbers, excuse me, of all the videos. We can see that this number, 94,000, is the biggest amount. Now let's encircle this result with an outer query, select video title from videos V, where V dot likes num bigger than or equal to all the results. To see what is happening here, let's see the, the part of the videos tables. This is the outer query, and then we go over every line, every row in this table. We start with the first row. This row AAA has a 50,000 number of uh, likes number. Now we ask whether this number is bigger or equal to all the numbers in the result of the subquery. The, the answer, of course, is not, because there is at least one number that is bigger than it, so this, is not, uh, this video not, doesn't get selected. We go over to the next row, the BBB video, we, saw, we see it as 48,000 likes number, and we ask if this number is bigger or equal to all the results in the results of the in a query, and the answer is no. And again to the next video. And a matter of fact, only when we get to the EEE video, we see that its likes number result is equal to the maximum number, so in bigger and equal, so it gets selected. Take a note that we must ask whether the likes number is bigger or equal and not only bigger than because the maximum number is part of the result. So if we would ask if the number is bigger than, so there was no uh, uh, result selected because there is no number that is bigger than all the other numbers. Um, this query also works like a nested uh, loop in program language in, the, in a way that uh, for each row in the outer query, we test against all the results of the inner query. Let's see another example. Let's find video titles that have less dislikes than the most disliked video. So this is a, a little a funny example. Uh, suppose we have a, a, a video that has the maximum number of dislikes uh, votes. So this is the most disliked. And I want to find all the videos that are not as bad as this video. So they are not disliked as this video. So again, we find or generate a list of all the dislikes number from all the videos. This is a very easy query. And we can see that the most disliked video is this one or this number, 44,000. Now we encircle this result with the outer query, select video title from videos V, where the video dislikes num is smaller than any of the results. So we don't want the dislike to be minimum or maximum or anything. We just want to find at least one number that is bigger than the my dislikes number, so I know that I'm not the most disliked video. So again, we go to the videos table in the outer query and run over each row. And for the first row, we ask whether this like number 1000 is smaller than any of the numbers. So the result is true. There is at least one video that its dislike number is bigger than 1000. So AAA is one of the results. If we go to BBB and we ask if its dislike number is smaller than at least one of the, of the numbers, the answer is false. There is no uh, video that has uh, uh, less than... Um, it has more than 44,000 dislikes because this is the most disliked, so this video won't get selected. Let's see another, a little more complicated example. Find video titles from Canada. That there exists at least one other video, not from Canada, that has at least one common tag word. It sounds a little awkward, so let's see a visual uh, example. Suppose this is a part of the tags table. So for each tag word, we have the word itself, the the video ID and the country ID of this video. We can see that the first row talk about a tag word uh, moon, the moon tag word. This uh, tag word comes from video that its ID is 111 and it comes from Canada, CA. We can see that this moon tag word appears in another row for video that comes from United States. So this moon belongs to video that comes from Canada and has at least one other video not from Canada with the same tag word. 
But if we take this row that talks about the Sun tag world, we saw that this tag world also describes video from Canada. But this uh, tag world doesn't have any match uh, video from other country. So this world gets selected. So again, let's start with the inner query. Let's generate all the tag words that come from uh, countries that are not from Canada. So this is select t dot phrase from tags and countries, uh, and we make sure that the country is not from Canada. Now we take the outer query. The outer query uh, uh, select the titles uh, of videos, and you will be making all the joins. But the the important thing is that country equals to Canada, and the phrase the t phrase equals to any of the results in the inner query. So the inner query generates all the phrase of uh, of videos that are not from Canada. If a, a video from the outer query that I know that I know that it comes from Canada as the same phrase as one of the phrases in the inner query, I know that I satisfy the condition and I'm taking this video as a result. One word about the distinct uh, word here, uh, because there can be a lot of tag words from the same video, I don't want to get the same title again and again, duplicate uh, uh, multiple times of uh, multiple times. So the distinct helped me to uh, remove the duplication. I highly recommend you to try to uh, write it uh, to yourself on a paper or something like that, like I did in the previous uh, uh, queries, to see how it goes. Let's see another query. Find videos titled from Canada that the tag words don't appear in any of the videos that are not from Canada. So here I want to try something different. I want to find videos uh, from Canada that their tag words are some, somewhat uh, unique, unique to Canada. So there is no other video not from Canada that contains those tag words. So again, I'm generating all the tag words that come from Canada. This is the same, but in the outer query, again, most of the query is, is the same, but the, the condition, the end of the where is where t dot phrase is not equal to all of the results of the inner query. So again, I'm going for uh, of every uh, row, for each row in the outer query, each row that comes from Canada, I'm checking that the phrase is, no, is not uh, equal to any other phrase of the videos that are not from Canada. So I make sure this um, this uh, 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 row is unique. We can use the inner query uh, in a little straightforward, uh, more straightforward way, something like that. Let's find video titles that the total views number is bigger than the average views numbers of all the videos. We can try to do it using the all and any, but there is a simpler way. First of all, let's find the average number of views. This is a very easy query. Using the aggregate function avg, we can select avg of views now from videos v. This result, this query result in one number. Now I'm in circle it with the outer query that saying something like that. Select video title from videos v, where v.viewsNum is bigger than and I'm writing the inner query. It's look a little bit strange because I'm, I'm writing bigger than and then instead of a number writing a query, but if you remember that the result of the average is just a number, this is how the database engine sees this query. It sees the, the question, the condition that is written in the work cloud as well, v.viewsNum is bigger than any number, some, some kind of number that was calculated earlier. So this is a very uh, proper uh, query and very, a useful way to write those kind of queries. If we can um, match the, the conditions to a given number or string, we can use the, the, the result of, a, of the subquery as a, as a one result and using the operator equals bigger than smaller than to, to make these queries. Let's see another example, try it by yourself. Let's try to find video titles that has minimum numbers of views. So take a few minutes to write by yourself and come back to see the, the result. So here's the solution. First of all, let's uh, calculate the minimum number of views. This is done by this query, select mean of views num from videos v. And then let's uh, uh, retrieve all the videos that the number of views is equal to these numbers. So select v.title from videos v, where v.views num equals to the result of the subquery. So this was a, a little bit complicated queries in this uh, lecture. I'm again, I recommend you to try and uh, try them by yourself and write the, the procedure, write the table, see how it goes like a nested loop. For each row, we test against the results of the result set of the inner query. 
and I see you in the next section from, for more inner queries. Hi, in this video let's talk about dependent queries. We saw that we can create a subquery that retrieves information, but all the information retrieved in the subquery was um, independent. It was gathered using only a local variable. But we can construct our subquery such that it would use data from outer query, making it a dependent query. Let's start with an example. For each country, I want to find the video title that got the most number of views. This is a very complicated uh, query uh, compared to what we did until now, because take a note that I don't want to find the total maximum of, uh, of uh, the views of all the videos. I want to separate for each country to find its own maximum. So if I, 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 I know the country, I could find the maximum. For example, I can find the maximum number of views of videos in Canada. In this simple query, select max of views num, for videos V, where VCID equals to CA, which is Canada. And I can find the maximum uh, views now of videos that come from the United States with the same query. And I can find it for uh, every specific country. But if you, as you can see, those queries are very similar to each other. The only thing that is different is the name of the country, is the uh, ID of the country. So if I could find a way to uh, write this uh, country name as a variable, and iterate through all the country names, I could write this query only once and generate all the results I want. So let's see how we can do it. We start with the outer query. Select V title, I want the titles of the videos from videos V, where views num equals two, and then I want to, uh, to compare the, the views num to the maximum value, but which maximum value? Now I'm writing the inner query. Select max from uh, of v2.viewsNum from videos v2. Take a note that I'm using a different name for the videos table because I need the both names, v and v2, and where v2.cid equals to v.cid. And this is a dependent query because this value, v.cid, if you uh, take a closer look, you can see that in the inner query, there is no variable called v. The v is coming from the outer query. So in a way, the outer query just and, uh, inherits or, or gives the, the value of the country ID to the inner query and the inner query using this uh, value to generate a separate result. So let's take a look of how it's happening. If you take a look at the video table, the outer uh, query goes over the rows one by one. So it starts with the first row. Now, uh, and now that we get this, the first row, we have uh, the CID, which is CA, Canada. Now, the database engine tried to perform or to activate the inner query, and the inner query trying to select the maximum value of the videos table, but only for videos that their county equals to Canada. So this inner query for the first row selects only the maximum from videos from Canada. And since the, the well condition uh, asking whether the views them equals to that value, I'm getting the maximum value, the, the title of the video that gets the maximum value. And when I'm going to the United States, to the next video, and again, this CID is US, again, the inner query is performed, but now the variable is US. So the inner query, which is the same query, is uh, executed, but with another value. So it gets a different set of results. This is a dependent query. Let's look at another example. Find video titles that have exactly three tags words. We know that every video, video can have uh, any number between one and uh, infinity number of uh, tag words. I want only those videos that has at least three tag words. So again, if I knew the, the video uh, characteristics, the idea and the country, I can count the number of tag words. For example, select count asterisk from tags T, where TVID equals to, for example, XYZ, suppose this is the uh, video ID, and uh, T.CID equals to CA, Canada. Okay, and uh, I can do the same query for another video. Uh, VID is equal to UVW and the uh, uh, CID is equal to US. And I can uh, do this query uh, for every separate video and get a separate result for each video. Uh, but I know that the, the query, I can see that the queries are all the same except those variables. The, the video ID and the country ID of the video are changing 
and for each different value of video and country ID, I want to generate a specific set of results. So again, I want to uh, write this query only once and put in those values a variable or variables uh, and iterate through all the existing variables. So again, this is the query. The outer one is select video title from videos fee where three equals two. And then the inner query saying select count asterisk from tags t where t.vid equals to v.vid and t.cid equals to v.cid. And again, those two values, if you take a closer look, you can see that they are uh, not existing, existed in the inner query. There is no v in the inner query. The v is coming from the outer query. So for each row in the outer query, uh, the database engine executing again the inner query, but it's uh, using the, a different set of values for every query. So again, if you look at, if you look at this table, suppose this is the tag words uh, or the, the video with the, with the uh, ID and the country ID, uh, we go over to the first row, the, the, for example, AA, and then we take the VID and the country ID and the database engine execute the uh, inner query when uh, it uses the VID and the, the country ID, the specific values of this row. And when it go to the second row, it would use the next values. Let's see another example. Find tag words that appear in five different videos. So again, Let's see the, the outer query, select t.phrase from tag t, where 5 equals 2, select count asterisk from tags t2, where t2.phrase equals to t.phrase. So again, the t.phrase is not found anywhere in the inner query, it is connected to the outer query, to the tags table. And again, take a note that it's very important to, uh, to call the inner query tags table uh, in a different name. We cannot ca call the, the inner table, uh, the inner query table uh, with the same name, T, because then it wouldn't understand which T you want to use. So here I, I have to use the two different names for the tags tables. And uh, again, for each row in the tags, I'm going and counting the number of occurrences of this uh, specific phrase and then I'm, uh, I'm uh, giving this uh, phrase, so I'm finding only the, the phrase that equals to uh, five times, that uh, appear five times in the tag uh, table. So this is a dependent query. Hi. In this video, I want to show you the exist and not exist operators that are also used to write dependent queries. So we saw earlier that we can use the in and not in operators to check whether a value is contained or not in a set of results. Sometimes it suffices to know if there was a result at all, and it actually doesn't matter what was the result. Let's try to look at it with a, a, an example. Let's find video titles from Canada, that upload from Canada, that appear in videos from the United States. So again, this is the query that we have done at least uh, twice in uh, the past. We want to find titles. We know that the titles are not unique. Titles of videos that were uploaded from Canada and the same title were uploaded from the United States. So uh, let's try to, to uh, break it into uh, smaller queries as we did in the dependent queries video. Suppose we know that the uh, video is titled AAA and it comes from uh, Canada. Take a look at this query. This query is select asterisk from videos V country C, where the VCID equals to CCID and C country equals United States and V title equals to AAA. If we know that AAA is from Canada, then if AAA is also from United States, then we know that this query uh, would contain at least one row because the select asterisk, I, I just remind you that it's uh, t telling the database engine to select all the columns of the table. So the select here would select the row, the row that satisfies the condition. But if the AAA doesn't come from the United States, this query would result in an empty set. Uh, set. There is no uh, result to this query if there is no video called AAA in the United States. And suppose we have the video BBB, and again, we know that BBB comes from Canada, and the question whether this video also comes from the United States, we can use this query. And again, if BBB is also from the United States, this query would result in one row, at least one row. If this uh, video is not, does not come from the United States, this query would result in an empty set. And again, we could do it for every video in Canada. We could uh, write this query, 
select asterisk from, etc., where country equals to United States, and the title equals to the video title. So for each video from Canada, we can test if there was a result or not. So take a look how we do it. We write the outer uh, uh, query, select video title from videos V, country C, where V, C, I, D equals to C, C, I, D, and C, country equals to Canada. Now we know that the first part of the outer query gives us a titles of videos that comes from Canada. Now let's look at the inner query. The inner query is select asterisk, as we saw earlier, from videos V2, country C2, again we must, must use different names, uh, and the C2 country equals to United States, and the V2.title equals to V.title. And again, the V.title is, as we saw in the dependent query video earlier, comes from the video, the V uh, table from the outer query. But now take, take a look at the twist here. The result of this, of this query may be uh, one row or more, or em and no, no rows, empty set. And every one of the results means something. If the result of the inner query contains at least one row, we know that the V.title, the specific title, is a video that comes from Canada and from United States. It comes from Canada because we have the country equals to Canada in the outer query, and it comes from United States because we have the uh, equation C2.country equals to United States in the inner uh, query, and we know that we are talking in the same V title. So we don't actually interested in the result itself, uh, except the fact that there was a result. But if the, this inner query doesn't give any result back, so it gives us an empty set, so we know that this particular title is not from the United States. So here I'm using the exists operator, and the exists operator, uh, operator tests exactly this. It asks whether there is a result or not. It doesn't uh, 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 interest in any way in the result itself, what is the result and what it contains and how many results there are, except the fact if there is at least one result or no results at all. And this would give us the result of the query. Let's see another example. Find video titles from Canada uh, that the categories don't belong to any other video from United States. So unique categories to uh, can Canadian videos only. Okay, we also saw this query in a previous uh, lecture. So uh, again, if I'm using this, um, this uh, 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 query, suppose I know that uh, there is a video from Canada from the category comedy. So if I'm using this query, I, I asking if uh, there is a, a result, uh, of videos that come from United States and their category is comedy. So if there is at least one video from United States that comes from ca a comedy category, the query would return uh, one or more rows. But if there is none, there is no video from United States from comedy, then the uh, query would result in empty set. And I can using it for every category that exists in Canada. So again, I can do it like that. The outer query is select the title from videos, countries, and I'm uh, make sure that the country is from Canada. And the inner query is uh, selecting asterisks uh, uh, of uh, videos that, that coming from the United States, but the category is coming from the outer query. And now I make sure that there is no result, because take a note that if the uh, inner query, or suppose we take a, a row, one row from the outer query that comes from Canada, now we have the, uh, this row's category ID and I'm trying to uh, perform the inner query with this category ID and make sure this uh, country is United States. So if the inner result uh, give me one result, uh, at least one result, I don't want to see this title in the, in the result, in the global result, because I want uh, videos that uh, have only categories in Canada and not in the United States. But if the result is empty, so the database engine couldn't find a video in the United States with the same category, this is exactly the result I want to see. So the not exist would be satisfied and I can get or retrieve the title. It's a little bit tricky because it's a, a, a opposite logic, uh, the not exist that uh, return true if there is no result, but uh, it's very logic. You can, you can try it by yourself and see this is very um, correct with this kind of query. Let's see another one find tag words that appear only once. 
okay, belong only to one video. I want to, uh, I know that uh, every tag word can uh, be in uh, any number of videos. I want those unique tag words, tag words that uh, I can find only in one video. So this is the query. Let's go over the outer one, select T phrase from tag team. Okay, so I'm selecting, this is very simple, all the phrases, all the tag words that exist in the videos. But in the inner query, take a look what I'm doing here. I'm selecting asterisk, again, it doesn't uh, uh, matter what I'm selecting uh, at all, uh, because I just want to perform the query from tags T2 and then, where the, the phrase is the same phrase, but I want to make sure it's not the same video, because uh, you must uh, understand that the inner query starts from, from scratch, so it, it can select the video that I'm, the, the tag word that I'm already selected in the outer query. So I'm taking the VID and the CID of the new tag word, of the T2, tag word and uh, I make sure that either the video ID is different or the country ID is different or both of them uh, but the, the tag word is the same so I want the phrase will be the same for example if the word is a door I want to be door here and door there but I want uh, that the, the country and the video or the video would be uh, wouldn't be the same so now I'm uh, writing where not exists so after I'm doing the inner query I just want to, to see if there is a, a result at all or not. If there is a result, so if the database engine could find another tag word from a different, uh, from a different uh, video, so this tag word doesn't uh, uh, go to the uh, outer query because I don't want to see those words. But if the database engine tells me there is no result, I couldn't find a, a, another word with a different video, uh, this uh, result would appear in the final result because those are the tag words I want to use. So this is a very clever use in the exist and not exist. Just a short note before we end this uh, video and section, the exist and not exist, you may notice by yourself, can always be replaced with the in and not in operators, always. You can always uh, manage to write those queries in a different way to use the in and not in. But uh, the in and not in uh, are very uh, exhaustive in a, in a way of, uh, of efficiency and the, and the performance because they uh, enforce the database engine to run over the group of elements and find if the element is in the group. So if the inner query is a, a very big uh, with S, a very big result set, maybe the in and not in would be uh, less efficient than the exist and not exist. Of course, sometimes you must use the in and not in, but uh, for other uh, uh, cases, uh, if you can uh, choose between in and not in and exist not ex exist, sometimes it's more efficient to use the exist and not exist because those queries doesn't uh, have to run over the result and set. They just uh, try to see if the result exists or not exists. So this is a much more efficient way to estimate the query. Okay, so this ends this uh, lesson and the, the section and see you in the next section. Hi guys, in this section, I want to talk with you about the group by clause. We already know, we discussed a, lo a lot about the general structure of the select query, and we know that the select query is consists of three keywords, the select from and where, and as for the order the, those uh, keywords are executed, we know that first of all, the form clause is executed, and the form clause perform a Cartesian product over all the tables, and we got a huge table. Then the WHERE clause is performed, the WHERE omits a rows that they don't uh, satisfy a, a specific condition or conditions. And then the SELECT comes and just pick a, a certain columns from what's left. Now I want to add another keyword uh, to the SELECT structure, and this keyword, keyword is GROUP BY. The group by comes right after the where and before, before the select, and the group by uh, groups the results into clusters uh, according to field or fields that was written in the cloud. Let's see a little example. Suppose we have this query, select v.cid from videos v, group by v.cid. So after the form the execution, we'll get this table. This is a very small part of the videos table. Of course, it doesn't contain all the rows and I omitted uh, all the unnecessary columns. So I want to, to show you only the necessary things. So this is the from cloud. Now, when we, the database engine performs the group by phase, I'm actually saying to the database engine, take this column, the CID column, and 
group all the rows that you get according to this column according to the value in this column. So what I'm, I'm getting here is a partition of this table into groups. And the, those groups, actually we have here three groups, uh, is as follows. We have this uh, yellowish uh, group that contains all the rows that the CID is CA, Canada. We have the green uh, group, which contains all the rows that the value in the CID column is US, United States. And we have the third row, uh, third group that contains uh, all the rows that uh, the value in the CID column is GB, Great Britain. After this grouping phase, the select is uh, taking place and is executed, and the select, in this case, selecting the v.cid. So the result is this result, the CA, US, and GB. The result uh, contained three rows, according to three groups that there are uh, in the grouping section. This is not a very useful uh, query. In the next videos, I'm going to show you a lot, uh, much uh, useful queries using the group by. I'm just uh, showing it to, to show the mechanism of the group by, but I do want to show you the difference the group by is making. Uh, so suppose we have this query. It is very similar to the uh, left query, but uh, we don't have the group by phase. So select v.cid from videos v, what we are expect to see is a list of all the countries, so something like that. But the difference, of course we get all the countries, but the difference is that we get duplications of the countries. We have uh, every, every row is represented here in the result set, and in the previous uh, uh, query, in the left query, we have only one um, uh, occurrence of every uh, value of the CID column. So let's sum up the, the main things of the group by. The group by clause groups the rows to several groups according to the fields in the clause. All the rows in the same group have the same value in the grouping column. In a way, you can think that this grouping value becomes the representative of the group. The select clause that comes in the end doesn't see the single rows, but only the representative values for each group. What it means that for that reason, this query is not correct, is uh, getting a compilation error or runtime error, because when we say select v.title, we cannot select values that are not part of the group by clause. It doesn't make any sense, because after the group by clause, in this example, after the group by v.cid, the only thing the select, uh, select clause C is the representative, the CID of each group. So I can't ask or I can't select the V title because in every group there are a lot of different titles uh, for every row. But the select, the select clause in this case doesn't see the single rows that consist each group. It just see the groups as a, a whole part or a big part and see only the grouping a column or the grouping field uh, according to which the grouping was done. So this is the main structure of the group by uh, K1. And in the next videos, we will elaborate about it and see a, a lot of examples that make use of this uh, useful keyword. So see you in the next videos. Hi. So in this video, I want to show you some useful examples of the group by keyword. So in the previous lecture, we saw that the group by close groups the rows in clusters and the grouping is done by specific fields or fields such that all the rows in the same group would have the same value in this field. After the grouping phase, the database engine doesn't see the separate rows, but instead it sees the groups which with the grouping field as the group's representative. Now we'll see how we can combine the aggregate functions, the max, the min, the sum, and all of those functions for each group separately. Let's start with a simple query find how many videos were uploaded from each country. So suppose we have this uh, videos table, or part of the videos tables, as we saw in the earlier previous lecture, and we see that from Canada, for example, the country ID of Canada is CA, there are two videos, and from United States there are three videos, and from Great Britain there are one, there is one video. And this is a, a quite difficult query to do without the group by, because I know how to count how many videos are from Canada, and I know how to count how many videos are from the United States, but I don't want a specific value for, uh, for a specific country. I want 
a big result that uh, summer up all the results from each country. So I want a table that would give me Canada two videos, United States three videos, Great Britain one video. So I want some kind of, of summary of all the counters. So this is how it's done. This is the actually the query from the previous lecture. Select v.cid from videos v group by v.cid. The result of this group by um, query is the grouping into three groups, the yellow, the green, and the orange group, uh, according to the country ID. So we have the first group contains all the videos from Canada, the second group contains all the video from the United States, and so on. This is not very useful right now, but now I will add something to the select clause. I'll add count asterisk. And this is the aggregate function. And the aggregate function combined with the group by query is uh, working, works on every group in turn, separately. And as you can remember, we, we said that, that when we learn about the aggregate functions, we said that we cannot mix aggregate function with regular columns. But here, since we are using the group by clause, the select clause or the database, database engine actually knows that the count asterisk or the aggregate function works on every group separately. So the result would be something like that. We'll have uh, two uh, columns in the result set. The first one is the country ID, the grouping field, and the second one is the counter. So Canada uh, uh, contains, the group of Canada contains two videos, two rows. The group of United States contains three rows, and so on. So this is the very useful way to, uh, to use the group by and the aggregate function together. Let's look at another example. Find the maximum numbers of views that was gained for each country. So here, this is the videos tables again, but now we have the views num uh, column, and we see that from, for Canada, the first video for Canada contains 22,000 views. And for the United States, if you will look, will look at the, uh, the rows of the United States, we have 35,000 views. And of course, the 35,000 is more than 22,000, but it doesn't matter, because we want, for each country, its own maximum. So this is the way we do it. Select v.cad and max of v.viewsLam from videosv and group by v.cad. Again, we group the, the table according to the country ID. So we would have three groups, Canada, United States, and Great Britain. But now the aggregate function we are using is the max, the maximum of the views now. And take a note that in the aggregate function, we can ask about fields that are not in the grouping field. Okay, we, we saw earlier that we cannot use in the select uh, clause fields that are not in the grouping field. For example, in this example, I, uh, I wouldn't be able to use the v.id uh, in the select query because v.id is not in the group by field. But here, inside the aggregate function, and since the database engine knows that it activates the maximum function of, for each group separately, it knows that it can maximize or it can do and perform the aggregate function for each group separately, and here it, do, it does it for the views num column. So we'll have the maximum value for each uh, country separately. Here is an, um, another example. Find how many times appears each tag word. So this is a kind of a very classic uh, query for the group by uh, uh, cloud. Select t dot phrase from uh, and count asterisk from tags t. Tags is the table of the, the keywords, group by t dot phrase. The phrase is the word itself. So if a single word, suppose the, the word book, appears uh, twice in two videos, uh, then the, those two rows would be in the same group, the, the, book, the, the group of book. So, uh, and, and the count asterisk would uh, count those two, line, those two rows. So we have uh, for each uh, phrase, for each tag word, we have how many times this tag word appears in the uh, tag statement. Let's see another example. Find how many tag words appear for each country. Now it's a little bit different, but we, know we want uh, to, to get some kind of uh, su uh, summarize uh, to, to know for each country how many words or uh, tag words uh, belong to this country. So in this example, if you can remember, the, the tags table contains three columns. The first one is the video ID, the second one is the country ID, and the third one is the phrase itself. So here, 
I'm selecting the t.cid, the country ID, and the count asterisk from tags t, and I'm grouping it by the uh, CID, the country ID. So I will have groups according to the countries, and for each group, I'll have the counter, the number of rows, which means how many tag rows appears in each a country. Let's see another thing. Find for each unique video how many tag rows it contains. What uh, do I mean by a unique video? So if you can remember, I said a minute ago, the videos, the, the tags table contains three columns, and the two of them, the VID and CID, identifies the video because we know that the ID, the video ID, is not unique. It is possible that the same video ID would appear for two different videos as long as they're coming from a different country. So in this example, you can see that the, the first two, two rows uh, talk about this uh, video ID, N1, W, etc., and uh, they're coming from Canada. So those first two rows talk about the same video, but the third row contains again the same video ID. But since the uh, country ID, the CID, comes from the United States, it's not the same video, even though it is the same video ID. So if I, I was uh, uh, to group this table according to the video ID only, which can be very tempting, I wouldn't get the, the right uh, answers because the grouping according to the VID would lead the, uh, to the fact that those two rows, uh, the three rows in the, the beginning of the table would have found themselves in the same group, but it isn't correct. The third row doesn't belong to the same video. So the grouping must be more sophisticated and I want to group the, the table according to two fields, the video ID and the country ID. So it, uh, uh, I will get three groups. The first one would contain the two rows, two rows that have the same values in the VID and the CID. The second group would contain the third row that contains the value in the VID and CID. And the third row, uh, the third group, excuse me, would contain two rows that uh, have the same values in this VID and CID. So this is how it looks like. Select t.vid and t.cid and count asterisk. I can ask about those two values because those two values appears in the group by and from tax t group by t.vid and t.cid and this example shows you that we can group the table not only uh, uh, by one value uh, but we can use, use uh, as much values as we want uh, as long as we want to refine the grouping to our purpose. So let's uh, see another nice example. I want to find how many videos were published in each date. So we know that the, the video tables contains the publish time column. The publish time is some kind of timestamp that uh, tells us uh, when this video was uploaded. But this uh, uh, column, the, the publish time, is very specific. Uh, it contains the date and the time itself. But it doesn't really matter for me because if there are two videos that they both were uploaded in November 1st, uh, 2016, for example, and the first of them was uploaded in uh, 8 p.m. and the second one in the 9 p.m., it doesn't really matter for me. I just want to know that they both were uploaded in the same day, in the same date in the calendar. So I want to uh, leave out or to omit the time part of the date. And I can do it using the date function. We saw it uh, in one of the uh, previous sections. Select date of v.publish time. This function takes a date, a, a full timestamp, and uh, give only the date part. So select date of v.publish time leaves only the date part of the publish time and count asterisk from videos v and group by date of v.publish time. And this is another nice example to show you that I can group the table according to fields that doesn't really appear in the table because the date of video published time is not a value that appears by itself in a table. We have a full timestamp. But if I'm using a function and gets from this function another value, for example, date of video published time, I can group the table or the rows in the table according to this calculated value. And of course, and then I can ask about this calculated value in the select clock. So all those examples, you can see them, of course, in the additional resources, are very classic examples and very useful exa examples for the group by clock. Let's go on to the next section to see another useful uh, elaborations of the group by clock. 
Hi everyone, in this lecture I want to show you how we can combine the where clause inside the group by uh, query. So we saw that the group by clause groups the rows in clusters. We can combine a where clause to this query. The where is executed before the group by phase. Let's see an example. Find how many videos had less than 5,000 likes from each country. So suppose we have this part of the videos tables and we have the likes num column. And we can see, and you can see, that the first two rows uh, talks about uh, uh, videos from Canada. And the first one gained 20,000 likes, uh, likes, and the second one gained only 2,500 likes. The second row isn't interesting us. In this query, we, don't, we are not interested in uh, videos that gain less than 5,000 5, likes. You can see that in the next three lines, the, there are videos from the United States. And again, the, the fourth line is a, a game, is a video that gained only 4,000 likes, and it isn't interesting in this query. So the way to get rid of those lines is, of course, to use the where. So here is the query. Select v.cid and count asterisks. So we have, a, for, from every country, we want to know how many videos there are, and from videos v. But here, I'm adding the where clause, where v.likes none is less than 5,000. This phase, when uh, the database engine performed the where, it performed it after the form, but before the group by. So the where clause is working over the entire table as we used to, to know, know it. So it omits those two lines, those two uh, lines that uh, we don't want to see in the final result. Now comes the group by phase, and the group by is done after the where uh, was taking place. So after the table doesn't contain anymore the, the rows that uh, don't satisfy the condition. So now we can group it by the country and we get the groups without the rows that were omitted. Let's look at another example. Find for each category how many videos belongs to it. So we saw earlier that uh, we, we, we could get by with only the country ID because the country ID is very similar to the country name. We know that CA is Canada and US is United States. It was very easy to infer from the country ID what is the country title. But we cannot do this trick in the categories because the categories IDs are only numbers. One, two, three, etc. And if we know that from category one there, was, there were 400 videos, it doesn't mean anything. We don't know what is the one. So we want to, to get to extract the category name. And we know how to do it. The category name is found in the categories table. So we have to do the join. So select cut title and count asterisks from videos V and categories cut. Now in the from clause, we are using or selecting over two tables. So the from clause perform Cartesian product. Now comes the where clause and uh, uh, performing the join where v.catid equals to cat.catid. Now, what is left uh, is a big table that contains only the rows with real data, so all the uh, data from the videos table, and in addition, the data from the category, the, the category title. Now, group by cat.title. Take a note that it's very interesting result here. We are grouping according to category title, but it's okay because the, the from clause that perform a Cartesian product and the result is a huge table that contains the column title, cut the title. So we can group the results according to this uh, category, this uh, column, and it's okay. Let's see another example. Find for each country and category how many videos there are. Okay, so uh, suppose we have from Canada and category arts, we have uh, three video, and from Canada, but the category films, we have uh, four uh, video. We want to see all those uh, separation uh, between category and countries. We want to see the both. So again, we have to group according to two tables, and here, select c.country and cat.title and count asterisk from three tables, videos v, country c, and categories cut. Now I'm using the countries because I want the, the real country name. Uh, and I'm performing the join, this is a double join, where v.cid equals to c.cid, this is for the country, and v.catid equals to cat.catid, this is for the category. And then group by c.country and cat.title. And again, I'm using double uh, 
uh, fields in the group by because I want this uh, level of resolution to, to get all the variations of the country and categories together. And let's see the last example. Find for every tag word that ends with the letter E how many times it appears in every country. It's a little bit awkwardly uh, uh, formulated the uh, query. So let's look at an example. This is the tag world or part of the tag world. And you can see that the first two rows talks about videos from Canada uh, or about the uh, tag words that uh, are for video from Canada. The first one is hello, the phrase hello, and the second one is age. Age ends with E, but hello doesn't. So uh, we don't want to see the hello world. It doesn't interesting, interest us in this query. And the same thing happens in the United States videos because we see that the third video from United States, the third world, is they. It doesn't end with E and it isn't interesting us. So we want to omit those two lines, the lines that uh, uh, doesn't matter for us in this query. And then we have to group it uh, by uh, the field. So this is the query. Select C.country, tiff.phrase, and count asterisks from tags T and country C. Uh, where t.cid equal to c.cid, this is to get the country name, and t.phrase like percent %e, this uh, guarantee that we get only the, uh, the, the words that uh, ends with e. Now, group by c.country and t.phrase, we get the, the resolution we want and the groups we want. So this is how we can combine the where clause inside the query that contains all also group by clause, and just remember that the where works as we know it, but it performs it, it, it execution before the group by. So the group by comes just after the where omits all the rows that uh, doesn't mean anything in this query. And so we get the groups only according to the conditions in the where. See you in the next lecture.